A woman with long dark hair, dressed in an off-the-shoulder dress, stands on stage. The stranger has several bouquets of flowers in her hands. They were recently given to her by fans. This woman is a famous theater and film actress. Selfishly beautiful and amazingly talented. That's all you need to know about her. Oh, they almost forgot. She is also obsessed with awards. Cameras click. Photographers ask a world-class star to look into the lens. The woman happily fulfills their request. She is used to being the center of attention. Dark forest. Tree branches break from a large amount of snow. The howling of the icy wind is heard. Hardly anyone would want to be here now. Seo Rinha, our successful actress, is lying by one of the trees. A woman dressed only in pants, a top and a light shirt, shivers from the cold. She opens her blue eyes. For a few seconds, Seo Rinha tries to understand what is happening and where she even is. The whole body of the dark-haired woman hurts. She carefully sits down on the snow. The woman looks around. From the large number of trees, she guesses that she is in a forest. The only question is how Seo Rinha got here. Two hours ago. There is a van with filming equipment on the rock. Fluffy white clouds float across the clear sky. You need an understudy, says Seo Rinha, one of the screenwriters. The movie star smiles and crosses her arms over her chest. If I want to collect all the awards this year, I will have to work. Dark Hair does not want to hear that this place is known for a large number of accidents. Seo Rin Ha thinks it's a silly rumor. The director orders to start filming. Seo Rin Ha takes another look at the set. Team workers have already taken all possible safety measures and conducted several tests on mannequins. Of course, the woman is a little scared to jump off the cliff, but she trusts the film crew. More precisely, she trusted, until the safety cable breaks. Seo Rin Ha remembers falling off a cliff into the ocean. But in this case, she still cannot understand why she is in the forest. In addition, in the forest, the weather in which is very different from the weather on the rock. It was warm there, sometimes even hot. Seo Rin Ha hugs her shoulders. What's going on? The girl wants to believe that all this is just another filming, but she knows that her team would never start filming in such a dangerous situation. The dark-haired one speculates that maybe she's just sleeping and can't wake up due to the shock of falling from the height. The wind cuts through Seo Rin Ha to his bones. Suddenly the woman hears someone's heavy steps and immediately turns her head to the side. Seo Rin Ha freezes in place when he sees a huge dragon with red eyes a few meters away. As the creature hits the ground with its tail, Seo Rin Ha steps aside, covering her head with her hands. What it is? The woman is scared as hell, but tries to hide her fear with aggression. The dragon makes a loud sound, pushes off the ground and flaps its wings. It took Seo Rin Ha a few seconds to realize that this bug was flying right at her. But the dragon does not have time to harm the dark-haired woman. Someone's sword takes his head off. The lifeless body of the pockler falls to the ground with a characteristic sound. Seo Rin Ha sees an incredibly handsome man with a bloody sword in his hands. The stranger has light, almost white hair and icy blue eyes. Unlike Seo Rin Ha, he is dressed according to the weather. High boots, gloves, and a warm coat with a fur collar. A fair-haired man approaches a woman. He starts to say something, but Seo Rin Ha doesn't understand what it is. For the first time, she hears such a strange language, apparently very ancient in origin. Seo Rin Ha looks around again. The girl notices that the weather and landscape are changing. The snow is gradually melting, and the dark clouds in the sky are dispersing, giving way to bright stars. The woman guesses that she has entered another world. It sounds strange, but it is true. The dark-haired man opens his eyes wide, trying to figure out what to do in such a situation. Previously, the actress did not believe in traveling between worlds. She thought that this only happened in manhwas and novels. The blonde finally notices that Seo Rin Ha is not responding to his words. He falls silent. The woman sincerely regrets that she does not understand the language of another world, unlike the heroes of the same novels. Seo Rin Ha clenches her hand into a fist in frustration. Suddenly a stranger extends his hand to the woman. The dark-haired woman stares at the man in surprise. She doesn't know if she should agree or not. On the one hand, this man can be dangerous. On the other hand, Seo Rin Ha's refusal will not save her in any way. The woman carefully places her palm in the palm of the fair-haired man. Before the actress has time to blink, a golden bracelet appears on her hand. The stranger lets go of the woman's hand. The dark-haired one is scared. Why did he put that on me? She begins to be indignant. What is this? The blonde notes that the bracelet works well. The woman understands his words, and she is shocked by this. In principle, like everything that happened to her in the last few hours, the dark-haired girl tries to say something, but it doesn't come out very well. The man advises her to calm down. Seo Rin Ha repeats the blonde's words and it seems to annoy him a little. The man's eyes twinkle, 
I made sure that it works correctly. You cannot repeat it. The woman guesses that the gold bracelet on her hand is a translation device. The dark-haired one puts a hand to his chest. Where are we? And who am I? Will you recognize it if I tell you? The man answers questions to questions. He does this because Seo Rin Ha's words seem to him weak and illogical. Although now it is not at all surprising, the dark-haired one smiles and admits that the name of this place will not help her get out of here. Anyway, the woman was never here. The man says that Seo Rin Ha can answer the second question herself. And in general, he should ask the woman who she is and what she is doing in his possessions. Seo Rin Ha squints and guesses that by the standards of this place, she is a person from another world. The blonde says that most likely it is. He's not at all surprised by the possibility of moving between worlds, the dark-haired man mentally notes. So, similar situations have already happened in this place. The moon peeks out from behind the clouds. A woman asks a stranger if many people come here. The man replies that it probably is. He has found corpses several times, but for the first time he sees a living person. The blonde takes a handkerchief from his cloak pocket and wipes his sword. The man's expression is indifferent. A woman sits on the snow. It seems to her that the stranger is behaving strangely. However, until the girl gets used to another world, it is better for her to be next to the fair-haired one. At least he can protect her. The actress touches the bracelet on her hand. The woman decides to get to know the fair-haired man. She stands up, approaches him, and with a smile on her lips asks, Are you a knight? The man lowers his head and smiles somehow ominously. The blonde is sure that the actress will be scared when she finds out who he is. The man's eyes twinkle. The dark-haired woman mentally speculates that the mysterious stranger might be the Duke of the North. This is a character from one of the fantasy novels Seo Rin Ha once read. How did the woman understand this? A cold look, extreme courage, indifference, arrogance, and rudeness. All these traits are characteristic of the Northern Duke. The guess of the actress turns out to be true. The man says that he is Calcian Lenbird, head of the Lenbird family and Duke of the Northern Path of the Kingdom of Iklan. The dark-haired woman extends her hand to the man. Nice to meet you. I'm Seo Rinha, but you can call me Selina. The woman decides to tell the Duke only what her fans know about her. The real life of a dark-haired woman can shock a man, but he seems already surprised. Selina. He opens his eyes wide. The woman's name sounds unusual to him. In addition, the fair-haired man does not understand why she extends her hand to him. Selina smiles and says that this is a banal greeting. The Duke silently stares at the actress. The dark-haired one is already thinking that maybe their etiquette doesn't allow greetings like that. The woman is about to take her hand away and apologize when suddenly the Duke touches her palm. The dark-haired man opens his eyes wide. She did not expect a response to greetings from this man who was cold in every sense of the word. But his next actions shock the actress even more. The blonde leans down and touches Selena's palm with his lips. In the world to which the dark-haired woman entered, women are greeted in this way. Congratulations, foreigner, the man says quietly. Selena liked the blonde, but he still can't admit it even to himself. The woman blushed at such a greeting. She tries to remember the last time her hand was kissed, probably only on the set of some movie about the 19th century. The Duke tells Selene in a somewhat disgruntled tone that she looks like a commoner, although her demeanor is quite polite. The woman says that in the world from which she came, there is no such concept. People are practically equal to each other. No one divides them into nobles and ordinary mortals. Truth? The Duke brushes the snow from his cloak. Dark-haired guesses that the man wants to make her an aristocrat, only because it will be of more use to you, replies the fair-haired man. Selina is a little scared that the man is trying to determine if the person he saved will be useful. Then, if my family is not of the aristocratic family, then I am of no use? The dark-haired man smiles contemptuously. The woman understands that it will be difficult to survive here with such a classification of people. The man says that it all depends on what the common man does. The woman asks what will happen if she suddenly turns out not to be very useful. The duke smiles out of the corner of his mouth. Dark-haired amuses the man a little. If so, he says, we must do everything to make you useful. The duke touches the woman's chin. Then he leans towards her and looks straight into her eyes. You will be useful. If, of course, you want to leave the mountain alive, it all depends on your desire. The dark-haired man is not very frightened by these words. The woman, on the contrary, smiles. He really is the Duke of the North, she says in her mind. Selina is glad to have met a fantasy character. Dark-haired takes the Duke's hand and promises to be useful to him. The woman says that where she came from, she was called the Sun. The dark-haired woman is sure that it will be the same here.
Selena touches her husband's palm with her lips and looks into his eyes. I will do my best not to become a burden to you. She tries to be polite. The Duke takes his hand away and coldly says that, of course, the dark-haired one will do everything possible if she wants to stay on his territory. The woman says that she can find allies for the man. However, the blonde is not interested in such an offer. He asks the dark-haired one how she can affect the development of Landbird. Selina thinks, the Duke is quite a practical man, trying to use the person he found for the benefit of his possessions. The woman tucks a strand of hair behind her ear and smiles at the blonde. I'm a very good actress. The man asks the dark-haired man to play. What? The woman is surprised. No, she didn't think the Northern Duke would take her word for it. But to ask to play a part in the forest, it's kind of strange. Play. Sounds like an order. The woman decides to ask again. Just here. Although the dark-haired woman has many years of experience as an actress, she has not yet played in such places. In addition, she is very worried now, so it is not a fact that anything good will come out of this. What? You can't? The fair-haired man's eyes twinkle. He challenges the woman. Selina folds her hands together, and with a forced smile on her face asks the duke what role she should play. Maybe the man has specific wishes. The blonde crosses his arms over his chest. Hmm, play the criminal. The dark-haired woman wonders why the duke chose such a role, but she does not dare to ask him about it. The woman decides to get down to business. After all, she has no choice. The dark-haired one approaches the duke, squeezes his shoulder, and leans down to his face. Hey, the dark-haired man says in a gruff tone, who are you to boss me around? Do you think you saved me and now I am your slave? The duke is shocked. The man tries to say something, but Selina stops him. The dark-haired one calls the fair-haired one a cheeky turkey. The woman hopes that the duke will not kill her for saying so. Fortunately, the fair-haired man understands that this woman is just playing her part. The man smiles and tells Selina that he is satisfied. The actress played as he wanted, but Selina wasn't done yet. A full-fledged image of a criminal is not possible without a drop of audacity. The dark-haired girl's eyes sparkle. What are you saying under your breath? Don't you see who is in front of you? The duke sighs. Well, I have to admit, you'll really be useful to me. Selina jumps for joy. Hooray, I will live. Herzog says that it will not be difficult for a woman to play her role. The dark-haired man does not really understand what role the duke is talking about. What does he want from her anyway? Has he already found a task for the woman? She thought that the blonde would just lead her out of the forest, and then she will arrange her own life. However, it did not turn out as expected. The fair-haired one flashes his blue eyes and tells the dark-haired one that she will enter high society as his lover. You will also be in mortal danger, adds the man with a smile, watching Selena's reaction. The actress did not expect such a scenario. A woman needs to think. She does not want to expose herself to danger, but if she does not agree to the duke's terms, he will leave her to freeze in the forest. Not the best option. The dark-haired woman wonders why the man chose her for the role of his beloved, the person he sees for the first time in his life. So, the fair-haired man has no one he can trust. The woman approaches the duke and says in a confident tone that she agrees to play his girlfriend. However, the dark-haired man is not going to risk his life just like that. Selina asks what she will get in return. The man is amused by this question. Life, he says. The fair-haired man believes that this will be quite enough. The woman replies that her life belongs to her anyway. Dark-haired people need more motivation. If you give such a task to me, a foreigner, then no one else is capable of doing it, she says. Selina thinks it's perfectly fine to demand payment for work. In addition, the work is not easy at all. Dark-haired people will have to constantly be in high society and keep your secrets. Duke sighs. You're right. Let's agree on this. You will play the role of my lover and I will provide you with a place to live and pay all your expenses. When the dark-haired girl finishes her work, the duke will help her get used to the new world. The woman sighs with relief. She will agree to such conditions. The duke says that he too will give her hope of returning to the world from which she came. Selina freezes in place. For some reason, during the entire time she was here, she never once thought about returning. This version of events seemed so unreal to her. I... can I come back? asks the dark-haired man in a trembling voice. Duke can't make any guarantees, but there is one way. The problem is that the northern lands are inhabited by dangerous dragons. A journey to another world can end tragically. If the woman succeeds in her task, the fair-haired man will personally accompany her to her homeworld. However, again, it is not a fact that they both will not die. That is why the duke used the word hope. Even so, it should be a good motivation for the dark-haired woman. 
The Duke smiles out of the corner of his mouth. His smile is somewhat unusual, sympathetic or something. It seems that he is sorry that everything happened like this. Even an enemy would not wish to find himself in a foreign, completely unfamiliar world, where all your merits are an empty place. Dark-haired is thinking. In all the fantasy novels she read, the characters remained forever in other worlds. Therefore, if there is even a small chance to return home, Selina will use it. The woman clenches her hand into a fist and tells the Duke that she will make every effort to return to her past life. To your friends, fans, and work, the blonde lowers his head. With every moment he likes Selina more and more. This woman behaves more or less calmly even in a critical situation, and that deserves respect. The man offers the dark-haired man to continue the conversation already in his castle. She happily agrees. After a few hours, they enter the gate. The duke and the dark-haired man are met by servants. They are surprised that their master did not come alone. The men ask the fair-haired man who this woman is, whom he is holding in his arms. Yes, you didn't hear me. The northern duke carried Selene wrapped in his warm cloak in his arms for a while. The man answers the servants that he found a dark-haired man in the forest. In the forest? asks one of the men. How did she even get there? The duke wasn't lying when he said that Selene was the first person who didn't die from being transported between worlds. The gray-haired servant is about to take the dark-haired one from the duke's hands. Your grace, let me, she must be heavy. Selena flinches at the gray-haired man's touch. The woman shyly clings to the duke's chest, showing the servants her reluctance to let him go. No need, Dion, says the fair-haired one, stuttering. The servants are shocked so that the northern duke himself, one of the richest and bravest people in the empire, would be silent. But also because of a woman, Selina directs a displeased look at the blonde. The woman is annoyed that the duke can't pull himself together and speak normally. As they agreed, a few hours ago, the duke and the dark-haired man are walking through the snowy forest. Selina, who is barely keeping up with her husband, tells him that after arriving at the castle, they should start making their plan a reality. The blonde stops. I still don't understand why I got the role of the mistress, but now it's not about that. What role will you play? Herzog believes that it is necessary to move on to more important points, but Selina, a master actress, knows the importance of details. If the Northern Duke suddenly has a lover, the people present in the castle will definitely suspect something. Dark-haired hints that their couple must have a backstory. The Duke sighs in exasperation. Details are a very inconvenient thing. After all, the man invents a good and quite believable fairy tale. He found Selina in the forest, saved her from death, and also fell in love at first sight. Duke's castle. Selina decides to take matters into her own hands until the fair-haired man finally betrays them. My dears, says the woman loudly, I want the Duke to carry me away in person. The servants freeze in place. The dark-haired one hugs the Duke's neck tighter and closes his eyes. I did it, says the woman in her mind. She herself is shocked by her own audacity. But the dark-haired woman had no choice. She could not calmly watch the duke's embarrassment. The blonde glares angrily at the woman. A few hours ago, the duke and the dark-haired man sit in the forest and look at each other. A man and a woman rehearse their behavior in a castle. They decided to start with looks. The duke tries to portray love, but he is a bad actor. The woman says that he does not look at her as a loved one, but as prey. Selina invites her husband to smile. He agrees. Selina realizes that this was a bad idea, now she feels like a victim of a possessed psychopath, and the cold shine of his eyes only enhances the effect of ominousness. The woman raises her hand like a schoolgirl who knows the answer to the teacher's question. I understand. You want to kill me. Can I really just kill you? He asks jokingly. Dark-haired says that he will not fool around anymore. The blonde sighs. He was tired of these trainings. The woman assures the man that this is necessary so that he can play along with her. Herzog says he understands everything, the dark-haired woman has no choice but to resort to one trick. What reception? The man asks. Selina winks at the blonde and says she's going to seduce him. To say that the duke was shocked would be an understatement. In his world, such love tricks are considered unacceptable. The blonde gets up from the deck. Selina is quick to say that all this will not be for real. She just wants to help the duke settle into the role. The woman begins to narrate the scenario she made up. You saved me from the dragon. I decided to seduce you and stuck like a bath sheet. What do you think? The man sits down on the log again. It's surprising that I calmly reacted to such a thing, he says. The woman agrees. But if you think about it, it's still more believable than sudden love, especially when the man has such a terrible expression on his face. The duke does not even try to argue, because he perfectly understands that the woman is telling the truth. The woman says that if the blonde agrees, 
then you need to come up with a plan right away. There are things that follow in behavior even if people try to hide them. Dark Hair says that the Duke's task is very simple. Agree to everything she says. He is not happy with such ideas. Love is pure madness, Selina winks at the Duke. A man in love gives his lady flowers and promises to get a star from the sky. He is not sorry to give everything for the sake of his beloved. These are real feelings. The woman notices the surprised look of the fair-haired man and guesses that he has never fallen in love. And the dark-haired one roughly understands why. The northern duke is not into love. The image of a cold and indifferent man does not allow him to show feelings for any lady. The woman says that the situation is difficult. It is very difficult to teach the duke the rules of behavior with a loved one in a few hours, but the fair-haired man must try to wrap everyone around his finger. The duke should show minimal interest in his beloved. Selina ponders, Um, how about my lady love? Can you say that? Do you want to be my slave? Asks the fair-haired man in a cold tone. The woman understands that this phrase really does not suit the duke's personality. It will sound harsh from his lips. Dark-haired offers another option. Don't want her to be someone else's, but the duke finds an answer to that too. He says he can just handcuff a woman. The woman is thinking. After a few seconds, she gives another idea. The duke patiently listens to the instructions of the dark-haired woman, but her ingenious method again does not suit the man. An hour passes. Selina was already tired of teaching the duke. The woman admits that the wig is an absolutely inflexible person, which is bad for acting. The blonde does not know how to wear masks, to play various roles. He is what he is. The woman covers her face with her hands and sighs in annoyance. The duke was also disgusted by all this. The man, like Selina, realized that he was not an actor. But the dark-haired man is not going to give up. She forced a smile. Let's try again. And they tried, but all to no avail. The duke barely managed to squeeze out a few words. It is clear why now, in her husband's castle, Selina intervened in his conversation with the servants. The woman observes the faces of the staff. She squeezes the duke's shoulder and begins to whisper in his ear to say at least something. The servants whisper among themselves. One of them, in an indignant tone, asks the woman how she, some rag from the forest, dares to speak like that to his eminence. Finally, the duke begins to act. So, he tries to speak as confidently and loudly as possible. The dark-haired girl hopes that the man will be able to say what is needed. After a few seconds, the fair-haired man, in a tone that does not tolerate objections, tells the servants that he will carry the woman himself. Selina smiles. He almost made it. The servants freeze in place with open mouths. The man turns his back to them and says that he is going to the castle. The dark-haired woman looks quite satisfied. When the man gets far enough away from the servants, Selina gives him a sweet smile. Congratulations. It was hard, but you did it. The duke blushes at the praise. He closes his eyes and asks the woman to shut up. Over the course of several hours, Selina had put him in an awkward position several times. The man does not want it to happen again now. The dark-haired man can barely contain his laughter. The stern northern duke, who can kill a huge dragon with one blow of his sword, is ashamed of his feelings. The man notices the dark-haired woman's reaction and asks what is so funny. It's okay, says the woman. I just think you'll continue to do well. The duke takes Selina to the castle. Maids and guards bow to the man. The dark-haired one looks around, never letting go of his beloved's neck. The fair-haired man orders the maids to prepare a bath and dinner for two people, and he himself goes into one of the rooms. There he carefully places the dark-haired one on the floor. The woman says that the servants almost bit them. Maybe we should have a little meeting to decide how to proceed, Selina suggests. The man agrees. The dark-haired girl sits down on a red couch trimmed in gold and asks the duke why she has to play the role of a criminal lover. The woman wants to deal with everything. The blonde sits across from Selina and takes a cup of tea in his hands. When my fiancé died, rumors of a criminal mistress began to spread in high society. The dark-haired man is surprised by how calmly the duke talks about the death of his bride. Apparently he did not love her. The man takes a sip of tea. I was angry at this interference in my life. A woman decides to find out exactly how her husband's fiancé died. She gently smiles at the blonde and asks him to tell the whole story. The man crosses his arms over his chest. He does not really want to talk about this topic, but he understands that it is necessary. The North is quite far from the North of the state, so the people were not interested in life there, until they found gold in the North. It was then that the Duke decided to get married. He chose the daughter of a decent baron, but she died. The dark-haired man listens carefully. The Duke says it happened the night before the wedding, in his residence. It is clear that it was murder. 
murder to discredit the lord of the northern lands. It was a challenge to Duke Lenbird, proof that his estate was not well protected. The man's fiancée was also killed to protest against his marriage. The blonde says that whoever it is, they will definitely pay for their heinous act. The man is going to kill them. The duke's gaze makes Celine uneasy. But the blonde does not notice this. He is used to the fact that people are afraid of him. The man says that people's version of suicide is completely implausible. The father of the unfortunate girl, the Baron, did not participate in the investigation. The blonde didn't want the guy to have a chance to set him up. Dark-haired says that the killer must be searched in narrow circles. The conversation between the duke and the woman is interrupted by a servant. He informs his husband that the bath is ready. The actress thinks that she should do with her clothes. Servants will definitely suspect something if they see a woman in a shirt, top and jeans. Duke offers to hide things. However, the woman immediately rejects this idea. Someone may notice how she folds her clothes somewhere. Suddenly, a good idea comes to the dark-haired woman's head. True, it may seem a bit strange. Do what you want. It seems that the Duke is already used to the woman's creative approach to absolutely everything. The dark-haired one flashes her eyes and smiles. Get ready. I'm going to show you real acting skills. Compared to it, the scene in the forest will seem unbelievable. The servant, a man with yellow eyes and greenish hair, is still standing outside the door of the room. He does not understand why the Duke did not answer him. Maybe something happened. Your Grace? The servant asks. The blonde turns his head towards the door. The man looks nervous. He will have to play a role again. Selina tries to calm her beloved. Don't worry. Focus your strength in the diaphragm so that a powerful sound comes out. However, the man is silent. Dark-haired once again decides to take control of the situation. I don't want them to help me undress, she shouts. The servants gathered at the door were surprised. Selina loudly declares that she does not want anyone but the Duke to touch her body. The two maids whisper to each other, trying to understand what is happening in the room. The dark-haired one lowers his head and closes his eyes. You better tell them all to get out. We belong to each other, and I won't let anyone touch me or you. The blonde is confused. He just stares at Selina. The woman snorts faintly. Then the duke finally says the right words. We don't need help. Everyone is free. The servants don't really want to leave the duke alone with his rude mistress, but they do not dare to obey the husband's order. Selina and the blonde look at each other in silence. After a few minutes, the dark-haired woman leans back on the sofa. Everyone has really left. I was shaking with excitement. And you, I understand, too. But we managed. The woman tells the fair-haired man that she wants to take a shower. Still, the forest is not the cleanest place. She asks the duke where the bathroom is. The man points with his hand to the right. Dark-haired thanks. The woman is glad that she finally had the opportunity to rest at least a little. But Selina still hasn't decided what to do with the clothes. Most likely, she will have to burn it. The woman enters the right room and freezes in place. A huge room with a high ceiling, a jacuzzi, several pots with plants. This is what the duke's bathroom looks like. The dark-haired man notices two robes hanging on hooks. The woman has another idea. Come here, Selene calls the duke. He fulfills her request. A woman asks a fair-haired man to take her clothes and tear them. God, what is this? The man is somewhat indignant. He himself does not understand why he allows Selena to make him do all kinds of stupid things. The man examines the dark-haired man. She stands in front of him in a robe. The duke finds himself thinking that this woman is very attractive. He abruptly turns his back on her. The blonde is afraid that Selena will notice him looking at her. The duke concentrates on his task of tearing the woman's clothes, but he says that he is doing well. Suddenly, the man stops doing what he was supposed to do. He abruptly wraps his arms around Selena's waist and covers the dark-haired man's mouth with his hand. The blonde asks her to be quieter. The woman asks what happened. The tense duke, not letting her go, says that someone is eavesdropping on them. Somebody like a spy or an assassin? Suggests the dark-haired one. So, replies the fair-haired man. Selene carefully takes the duke's hand away from her mouth. The woman says she is not surprised. She wonders what the duke will do. The man worries about how to kill the one behind the door. The dark-haired one is once again convinced that the duke is a very strange person. Maybe he's even crazy. In any case, killing is the last method that should be used to get rid of enemies. Selena wasn't going to let the duke do that. The woman offers him to use her. The blonde doesn't really understand what Selena is talking about. The woman raises her index finger. Let's fool them by creating the situation we want right now. It's better than watching the duke's poor acting. The man is not offended by these words. He suggests that Selena do everything for real. The woman opens her eyes wide. The fair-haired man's plan sounds somewhat obscene. No, 
The Duke is certainly very handsome, but she is not ready to become his real lover so quickly. A woman pushes a man away. She turns her back to him and sighs. I didn't think you were so obscene. The blonde, as always, doesn't understand what the hell is going on. The woman says that she herself takes care of acting. The Duke can only smile or tear his clothes. The man wants to ask Selena something, but she doesn't let him say a word. The dark-haired girl rests her hands on the Duke's shoulders. Sometimes you can gently call me by name, she continues giving instructions, but don't be awkward. The woman twinkles her eyes cheerfully and smiles at the Duke. She says that she will do everything herself. Selena is a born actress, so the blonde has nothing to worry about. The dark-haired woman's clothes are torn. She and the Duke are sitting, or rather lying, in the jacuzzi. The man lets out a nervous laugh. He knew that Selena was quite a brave woman, but that was it. No one had yet dared to overthrow the Northern Duke himself. Unbelievable, says the man. It's so great to act out a shameful situation. The dark-haired girl is glad that the Duke praised her, even in such a modest way. Have the servants left? The woman asks. So? The Duke is still amazed. Selena's acting was so passionate that even he could not stop the woman. The dark-haired woman suggests that the man get out of the jacuzzi, dry himself and call the staff. After all, the Duke has to work. He doesn't have much time to have fun with his lover. And don't you wonder, the woman winks at the man, what the servants will say. A maid is standing behind the bathroom door. She is shocked. The Duke brought a woman to the castle and immediately, without introducing his passion to anyone, went with her to the bathroom. It is very strange. The maid opens the door and freezes in place when she sees Selina and the Duke in white robes. The dark-haired woman gently holds her husband's hand and smiles. The maid tells the woman that she is going to take her to the dressing room. Selina doesn't mind changing into a cute dress. The dark-haired one tells the Duke that she will return more beautiful. Thirty minutes pass. Selina examines herself in the mirror. A woman's hair is gathered in a neat hairstyle. A dark-haired woman wearing a blue off-the-shoulder dress. Selena's outfit is decorated with gold threads and precious stones. The dark-haired woman is surprised that she was allowed to wear such a dress. The servants are amazed. They say that the former duchess was very fond of such clothes. The woman guesses that the maids mean Calcion's mother. One of the maids tells Selene that she should appear in this image before his lordship, dark-haired only. She suddenly opens the door of the next room. What are we waiting for? The servants sigh. The impudence and impudence of this woman in some places frighten them. Your Highness, greets the dark-haired one. A man dressed in a white suit directs his gaze at her. The woman smiles widely. How do you like it? Does it suit me as not it? The dark-haired man behaves with the Duke as sincerely and simply as possible. This is how they treat their loved ones. The blonde frowns. Selina almost grabs her head. Again, the man cannot play an elementary role. Why won't he just smile? Did the man take offense at Selina for wearing his mother's dress? On the other hand, the man's servants themselves chose clothes for the woman. She was just following orders. The blonde is going to order the servants to immediately bring the person who chose this particular dress for Selena. However, the dark-haired man does not allow him to do this. She pulls the man by his tie and sits on his lap. The woman looks into the duke's eyes and smiles defiantly. The dark-haired one hopes to stir him up a bit. The woman asks the duke if he can think of anything else with her in front of him. Selena understands that the man feels uncomfortable because she wore his mother's dress, but this did not happen by the will of the dark-haired woman. Doesn't this dress suit me? The woman wants to distract the duke from sad thoughts. Now he needs to relax. Selena asks the blonde why she wears beautiful dresses if he doesn't like it. Am I pretty in this dress? The woman smiles playfully. Confess in the end. The dark-haired woman directs a demanding look at the man. She mentally asks him to answer, because they are both tired for the day. The woman touches the duke's tie with her lips. The blonde decides to give up. All the same, Selena won't let go of him just like that. The man lowers his head and sighs. Pretty. Very pretty. The dark-haired woman smiles with satisfaction. It's so hard to get a compliment from Kalshan. Your Highness, the servant addresses the duke. A woman and a man turn their heads in her direction. The maid bows to them. Excuse me. It was I who ordered the lady to wear this dress as I thought it was the one thing you had never seen. So it was you? The blonde seems disappointed. Even though I've never seen her, how could I not understand? The maid once again asks her husband to forgive her. Aren't there any other clothes in this huge castle? Asks the duke. The maid says that apart from the former duchess's outfit, there is only the maid's outfit. Selina understands that the servant is not going to back down so easily. She also discovers some strange curiosity in the woman the duke brought. Blonde says he overdid it. 
I will always be grateful for your hard work keeping the castle in order, adds the man. The dark-haired one climbs off his lap. Selene is surprised that Calcyon would let the maid go so easily. How could he do this to a person who dared to take his mother's belongings without permission? Why is he so condescending to Mrs. Jeanette? The dark-haired man says in his mind. The duke asks the maid to bring dinner. Good, your grace. Mrs. Jeanette heads for the exit from the room. The dark-haired woman feels awkward. Before leaving the room, the maid looks back at Selena and somehow flashes her eyes ominously and smiles. Mrs. Jeanette is against the duke's beloved. Maybe she is jealous of Selena's husband. Dark-haired is indignant. What? I didn't think so. Did she just smile? The woman's guesses about Janet's not very good intentions were confirmed. An hour later, the maid served dinner. A young man with gray hair enters the room. The duke recommends him to the dark-haired man. This is Dion, head of the knights, my guard and friend. The blonde warns the woman that the knight knows about their plan. Selena calms down. So we don't have to play in front of him. Take care of me. Dion excitedly asks her husband if everything is going to be okay. The knight talks about the performance of Selena and the Duke. Gray-haired is afraid that someone might bite them and harm Calcion. Dion asks the dark-haired one if she is playing now. The woman considers this question strange. Why should I play a role if you already know everything about it? Besides, I need to rest sometimes, too. Dion tells the woman that even if she doesn't have any feelings for the Duke now, it's not a fact that they won't show up later. Still... His lightness is a desirable goal for any lady. The dark-haired one hurries to reassure the man. My safety is important to me, so I don't claim your master's money. The woman finds the night boring. Selena's nerves are slowly giving out. She says that she is not interested in either the duke's fortune or himself. Calcium is not my type, she exclaims. The blonde freezes in place. For some reason, the woman's words stuck with him. The dark-haired one ignores this. Money and looks are important she explains in a calm tone, but I pay more attention to a man's character and on his ability to eloquence. Therefore, the knight, as the woman had already said, may not worry about the duke. The blonde looks at Selina. The woman raises her eyebrows and points a finger at him. I will not fall in love with Calcion for anything. I swear, everything that happens between us is just a game. Dion and the light-haired man look at the dark-haired man in silence. The woman assumes that if even a close person who knows about the plan has doubts, then everything is going as it should. The dark-haired woman smiles at the men and twinkles in her eyes. I rely on you, and don't be surprised if I do something unexpected. It's my style. Dion, a little frightened by the sudden change in the woman's mood, carefully tells the Duke that he is still not sure of the reliability of his plan with Selena. Calcion asks his friend to leave. Selena and the blonde remain alone. A stone flame illuminates part of the room. Quite a romantic atmosphere. The Duke tells the woman that he must warn her about something. First, spies can be anywhere, so Celine should be very careful. This is not a problem for a woman. She has received a lot of attention all her life, so she can handle the spy. Secondly, continues the fair-haired man, you can get out of the picture when we're alone. However, the woman immediately refuses this offer. She tells Calcion that they will have to practice all the time. A man must train so that he can pretend to be in love. The blonde sighs. The woman does not understand the duke's irritation. After all, he makes life difficult for himself. For example, recently the man almost had a fight with Mrs. Jeanette, with whom there had been no problems before. A blonde should learn to control her emotions. Otherwise, in high society, he will be bitten off immediately. The duke puts his hand to his forehead. Your truth. The woman is pleased that at least now this stubbornness has not started to show its character. Dark hair asks the duke who she should be especially careful with. He is thinking. There is a person who has already got a fair-haired one. Selina is surprised. Herzog has no acting skills, but his endurance is iron. What kind of person could bore him so much? Some naive girl from a poor family who didn't fall head over heels in love with Calcyon, the woman suggests, or a sly aristocrat. Interesting. The next day, Selina and the Duke are walking around the castle. Suddenly they hear someone's shrill voice, Your Highness! The dark-haired man asks the man if this is the annoying person he was talking about. The blonde confirms the woman's guesses. A pink-haired girl in a lush dress is rapidly approaching Calcion. She smiles at her husband. The girl's name is Fionnel. I was worried that you would be bored here without me, she says, squinting sweetly. The pink-haired girl is very happy to see Calcion. The dark-haired girl immediately understands what kind of character this girl has. Fionnel is a determined and not at all shy person, and also, according to the Duke, annoying. Selena's eyes sparkle. 
It's been a little over a month since the Duke's ex-fiance, Errol, was killed. Shortly after the girl's funeral, Calcian moved to Landerbird. Probably someone had to take the free seat next to the man. However, this is too risky. Errol's murder proved that the Duke's bride would always be in danger. But as it is, either Fionnel is a stupid papa's daughter who thinks that she will not be killed, or she is the murderer of the bride of Duke Calcion. The dark-haired man watches the girl carefully. If the pink-haired one is in love with the fair-haired one, then the probability that it was she who killed Errol is quite high. However, there is still no evidence of Fionnel's guilt. I don't remember that you were invited. The Duke does not behave very politely with the pink-haired one. However, the girl is not upset about this. She says that she has come to comfort the grief-stricken Duke. How do you like my decision? Fionnel claps his hands and shines with bright eyes. The fair-haired man understands that the girl will not leave him so easily. You can escape from Fionnel only by running away. The man grabs the dark-haired man's hand. Run! The pink-haired girl is upset that the Duke does not want to talk to her. The girl stomps her foot. Your Highness, let's go together. If you continue in the same spirit, you will lose me. Calcium stops for a moment. It would be nice if Fionnel's words turned out to be true. The blonde would do anything to keep this girl behind him. The man gently pulls Selina by the hand. The couple walks quickly down the hall. Fionnel looks after the duke and the dark-haired man. The girl calls out to his lordship, but he does not respond. Fionnel tries to catch up with Cation and Selene. The girl asks the man why he communicates only with dark hair. Who is she anyway? Selina starts to get angry. Fionnel's insistence is really annoying. The girl does not understand elementary hints. It's somehow even impolite. The noble-haired woman says in a plaintive tone that she has come from afar. The girl hopes that the duke will appreciate her efforts. She begins to tell how difficult it was for her. You know, the back gets tired after a long ride in a carriage. Fionnel asks her husband to take her hand. The duke refuses the girl. Calcion perfectly understands that the pink-haired one is simply manipulating him. Nothing hurts her. That girl does not even think of giving up. She decides to take matters into her own hands. The pink-haired girl leans on the man's shoulder and closes her eyes. Look, it's that simple. The girl glares at Selina. Fionnel wants to intimidate the woman into leaving the duke, but such behavior only makes the dark-haired man laugh. Fionnel is still a child who knows nothing about bullying. In order for the girl to fall behind the duke, you need to follow her own methods. Selina grabs her husband's hand and frowns. Selina is hungry, let's go, I want to rest. And you ladies wait, my leg hurts. Dark-haired Fionnel parodies. The latter is angry. It is unpleasant to see yourself on the sidelines. Selina's eyes sparkle and she turns to the duke. Please. The woman tries to look as innocent as possible, and this innocence reaches the point of absurdity. Fionnel drills the dark-haired man with a devastating look. How dare you behave like this, says the girl in her mind. I will not lose. She again puts on the mask of a sick person. Your grace, it is so difficult for me. I'm about to fall. The blonde is not moved by this. He tells the girl that it is better to fall on the bed. It is at least softer. The duke takes Fionnel's hand away. He orders the maid to escort the girl to her room, pink-haired in despair. Selina looks back at the girl and shows her her tongue. Fionnel wanted to play, so she got what she deserved. Still, with such annoyingness, she would not capture the heart of the duke. The pink-haired one starts yelling to the entire hallway, Hey, what are you doing? The maids try to calm the girl down. The dark-haired one smiles with satisfaction. One of the rooms of the castle... Calcian and Selene are having dinner. The duke admires the way the woman handled Fionnel. The dark-haired one asks if all of high society is as unpleasant as that girl. Not everyone. The duke raises a fork to his mouth. She's special in that regard. Is she a socialite? Asks the dark-haired man. Calcian says it's not. Selena still has to meet with really strong acting people with rotten souls. The dark-haired one wants to discuss the salary with the duke. A woman's work becomes more difficult. The man is completely calm about money. As much as you want. The woman is somewhat surprised. Usually aristocrats guard their wealth. Selina decides to test the duke's generosity. The woman flashes her eyes and says that she would like to receive a hundred times the initial amount. Give me back my words. You can't get rid of a fair-haired person so easily. Selina laughs. The woman apologizes. Her words were an innocent joke. However, in the heart of the dark-haired person, it is not funny at all. A woman understands that numerous trials await her political struggle, numerous rules of conduct. The aristocratic world is not as simple and romantic as it seems at first glance. The rich, deprived of the burdens of ordinary people's lives, arrange political games. They compete with each other for power and money. 
These competitions are sometimes very cruel and unfair. Celine will have to take part in them in order to catch Errol's killer. The Duke's voice breaks the woman out of her heavy thoughts. Have you eaten yet? The dark-haired woman decides to share her feelings with her husband. I thought about the future, and I lost my appetite. The blonde shrugs his shoulders and continues eating his meal. Yes, he lacks not only acting skills but also empathy. Duke, Selina turns to her husband. The woman smiles at the fair-haired man. Treat me with a piece from your plate. You know it's not very nice to eat alone in front of a lady. The blonde raises his eyebrows. He does not understand Selina's request. A woman has her own portion of food, which she voluntarily gave up. What is the problem? The woman puts her elbows on the table, which goes against all the rules of etiquette, and tells the duke that his steak looks much better than hers. The dark-haired woman reminds her husband that she must eat well in order to have the strength for work. He surrenders and gives her his dish. However, Selina is not completely satisfied. The pieces on the duke's plate seem too large for her. The dark-haired woman asks the man to cut a steak. She can't do it herself because she doesn't have a knife, and asking someone to bring another cutlery is an unnecessary risk. As the duke himself said, there are many spies in the castle. The man silently stares at the dark-haired man. She behaves very bravely, but her words have a certain logic, so the blonde has no choice but to fulfill her request. A man cuts a steak. The dark-haired girl smiles and innocently asks the duke to feed her. The woman says that she does not have the necessary cutlery to eat by herself. The man sighs. Okay, I'll do this one. But you know I'm just playing along. If it wasn't for our plan, I would have just asked the maid to bring you a knife and fork. The fair-haired one brings a piece of meat to the lips of the dark-haired one. The woman smiles. What a delicacy. Selina is glad that she managed to persuade the duke to do a romantic act. But of course, as the man said, it's just playing for the public. The dark-haired woman waves her hand and tells the duke that she has regained her appetite. Now the woman wants dessert. The blonde feels embarrassed about what he fed Selina. I need to leave. The man leaves the room. The woman is upset and annoyed at the same time. She understands that the duke is not a romantic, but he could have endured an hour. The dark-haired one crosses her arms over her chest. It turns out that I should only rely on myself. Calcium can't play. However, the woman is not sure that she has enough strength to pull everything on herself. Selina is thinking about how to soften the character of this icy man a little. She has one good idea. A woman wants to repeat romantic episodes from famous films. It's not a fact that a fair-haired person will do this, but it's worth a try. A maid enters the room. Dark-haired thanks her for the food and asks where the duke is. The maid says that his lordship must have gone to his office. Fifteen minutes pass. Someone is knocking on the duke's study window. The blonde opens it and freezes in place when he sees Selina with a bouquet of flowers in her hands. The woman tucks a strand of hair behind her ear and smiles at Kaltsyanov. Hello? The dark-haired woman decided to start the implementation of her plan with a classic scene, a secret meeting with a loved one. The blonde asks Selene what she is doing here. Oh, this situation is so touching, says the woman. I have collected a bouquet of flowers for you. The duke asks the girl to come inside. Better to talk to Selina away from prying eyes. Dark-haired easily jumps onto the windowsill and descends from it to the floor. The blonde once again tells Selina that her acting is simply unsurpassed. The woman smiles smugly. Of course, I was created for this. The dark-haired one winks at the duke and asks if she managed to charm him. The northern landlord's cold heart has begun to melt, hasn't it? Says the woman cheerfully. The blonde reminds Selina that they agreed not to fall in love with each other. The dark-haired one says that he is just teaching the duke how to show love, but it is not quite so. The woman seems to have certain feelings for the fair-haired man, but she herself does not realize it yet. However, now is not the time for thinking. Selina hands her husband a bouquet of flowers. She tells her husband that she wanted to show him what true romance is. The blonde looks at the bouquet. Romance, he says thoughtfully. The man, as you already know, is unfamiliar with this concept. He puts his hands on his waist and asks Selina in a serious tone if it's true that she hasn't fallen in love with him. The woman says she is trying to survive. You're not chasing me away, are you? She spreads her hands. Otherwise our plan with you will go under the cat's tail. The man's head starts to hurt from Selina's antics. He allows Selene to stay on the condition that she behaves quietly. The woman agrees. She picks up the book lying on the table and sits down on the couch. Dark-haired says that he will read. The duke can work quietly at this time. The man stares at Selina, telling her to shut up. Evening. The blonde's office. A woman is sleeping on the couch. After a few minutes, she wakes up. I took a little nap. 
Selena notices that the Duke's jacket is on her shoulders. It seems that the man covered the dark-haired woman so that she would not freeze. It's cute. The woman puts Calcion's clothes away and stretches. My whole body hurts from sleeping on an uncomfortable couch. The woman wants to stretch a little. She decides to go to the training ground and ask the Duke to teach her martial arts. This is a great opportunity to turn him into Romeo. The dark-haired one leaves the room and approaches one of the maids. I'm sorry, you don't know where the Duke is right now? From the look of the girl, it is clear that she is not very happy to see Selena. The maid wouldn't mind ignoring the dark-haired man, but she's a little afraid of Calcion's wrath. The girl says in a displeased tone that the Duke is training. Selene doesn't really like the way the maid talks to her. Servants must not disrespect their master's guests. The dark-haired girl crosses her arms over her chest. She will not leave it so easily. The woman flashes her eyes angrily and asks the maid where the training hall is. The dark-haired woman's tone is cold and demanding. The maid realizes that she has made a mistake and starts to get nervous about it. She points with her hand to the right. That's over there if you pass by the garden. Selena, not listening to the woman, jumps up. A few minutes later, the woman is already walking through the dark garden. An ill-mannered maid spoiled the woman's mood. And I treated her so well, says the dark-haired man bitterly. The woman closes her eyes and sighs. It is already difficult for her to live in a new world. A world where even the servants treat her with contempt, as if she is the duke's toy, whom he simply allows a lot. The dark-haired girl hopes that one day she will be able to return home. She was loved and respected there. The woman was so deep in her thoughts that she didn't even notice how she got lost. Why is this garden so messed up? Selena scolds herself for not listening to the maid. The woman begins to shiver from the cold. The dark-haired woman wonders what she should do. There is simply no one to ask for directions. All the servants are now in the castle. Suddenly, Selena hears a screeching sound. A woman looks behind a bush. Is anyone here? There is no answer. The dark-haired man takes a few steps forward. The woman flinches when she sees an angry Fionnel coming towards her. Leaves stuck to the girl's hair and dress. It seems that Fionnel wandered around the garden for more than an hour. But why? Did the girl follow Selena and Calcion? The pink-haired one rudely asks the woman what she is doing here. The dark-haired man is not surprised by such audacity. The woman has already realized that Fionnel uses impolite behavior as a defense against his potential enemies. That is, from everyone who communicates with the Duke. Selena says she's looking for a man. Are you doing the same as me? The dark-haired man pretends to be surprised. The girl is indignant. Me? Of course not. She tries to hide her obsession with the blonde. Selena points out that a man is unlikely to like Fionnel's appearance. Oh, I'm afraid, I'm afraid, replies the pink-haired one. The woman distorts it. Now they both look like little girls who can't share a toy. Fionnel angrily shouts that Celine does not repeat after her. The dark-haired one calms down. After all, she is better than Fionnel in everything. She doesn't have to prove anything to this ill-mannered girl. The pink-haired one is even more angry. She points her finger at the woman. You, you are definitely an aristocrat. I challenge you to a fight. Selina crosses her arms over her chest and says that she is an ordinary person. And as for the fight, it's completely absurd. Where is it seen that girls fight for a man? Fionnel glares angrily. The girl exhales loudly. It seems that she understood that you cannot defeat Selina by shouting. The pink-haired one decides to act as calm as a woman. The girl clenches her hands into fists. Hey! Fionnel tries to find the right words. The dark-haired woman is wondering what the girl will say. Do you have a lot of money? Finally says Fionnel. Or do you have a rich patron? The girl hints that the Duke is dating a dark-haired woman only for his own benefit. The woman pretends that she did not understand anything. She wants to play with Fionnel. And of course, to rub this little one's nose, to show that she is still far from being a good actress. The dark-haired man looks at the girl with an indifferent look. The pink-haired girl's yellow eyes flashed with a wicked light. If you keep acting like this, I might actually kill you. Fionnel's face looks creepy. The girl seems to be under hypnosis. Dark-haired frowns. This is already quite interesting. Did Fionnel, that embittered child, brutally kill the Duke's bride? Of course you don't know. Fionnel's gaze becomes glassy. But I've already killed one. A herd of ants runs through Selina's body, but the woman tries not to show it. Fionnel's words sound quite convincing. Dark-haired suggests that Fionnel might kill her too. By the way, now is the perfect time for that. They are in a deserted garden. Selina is unarmed. The woman wonders if Fionnel has any weapons. A girl will not pounce on her with bare hands. Although... Knowing the nature of the pink-haired woman, such a development is quite possible. 
Fionnell clenches his hands into fists. The dark-haired one slowly retreats. The girl approaches her. Selina raises her eyebrows and raises her fist. The dark-haired one hopes that Fionnell will lose even a shred of his confidence. But if the girl is not alone here, perhaps she has faithful dogs who will gladly bring Selina's body to the feet of their owner. The woman's heart begins to beat at a frantic speed. The dark-haired man opens his eyes wide. Selina mentally prepares for death. The woman never thought that she would die at such an age and under such circumstances. Selina? The voice is too familiar. It seems that the woman is saved. She looks around and sees the northern duke. The dark-haired woman mentally thanks God that the man came on time. Duke! Selina runs up to the fair-haired man and hugs him tightly. The shocked man carefully puts his hands on the woman's waist. The dark-haired one exhales loudly. Phew, I'm saved. With a trembling voice, the woman tells Kaltsyanov that she was very scared. And it's true. Selina. The man directs a confused look at the woman. He had never seen her in this state before. Until now, the dark-haired woman had behaved very bravely, sometimes even madly. What's wrong with her now? The man says in his mind. He looks around and notices Fionnell, who has not uttered a word since the fair-haired man's arrival. The girl shivers. Kelsian addresses the pink-haired woman by name in a firm voice. He guesses what happened, but for the sake of justice, he is ready to listen to the girl's version. Ah, oh, well this. The pink-haired girl tries to avoid eye contact with the duke. The girl no longer looks as defiant as she did a few minutes ago. Selina, who still does not let the duke out of her arms, turns her head at the muttering of the pink-haired girl. The woman thinks it would be nice to get revenge on Fionnell. After all, the girl's inappropriate behavior cannot be ignored. But the duke needs to explain the whole situation very gently. The dark-haired one puts on the victim's mask. Or rather, just adds a bit of tragedy to his true state. Selina tells her husband that Fionnell threatened to kill her for always being around him. The pink-haired woman hugs her husband's hand. Your Highness, Selina is lying. The dark-haired one hugs the light-haired one's chest. Why is Fionnell so close? I'm afraid of her. The woman asks the blonde why the girl hates her so much. Fionnell tries to justify himself. Selene and the pink-haired man are talking so fast and loudly that the duke's head starts to hurt. Selina notices this. The woman understands that if she and Fionnell continue to argue, the man may lose consciousness. This cannot be allowed at all. Selina decides to end this fight before giving the pink-haired girl a fatal blow. The dark-haired one gently touches the duke's neck with his hand. The woman says that she wanted to find him, but got lost in this garden. I couldn't understand where I was. She hugs Calcian's neck. Please hug me. The duke takes the dark-haired man in his arms. The woman is satisfied. The man surprisingly did more than she expected. The dark-haired man exhales in relief. She feels safe next to Calcion. Fionnell is indignant. She hits herself in the chest. Your grace, and what about me? The man sighs tiredly. He orders one of the knights to lead the pink-haired girl to her room. The woman cautiously looks over the shoulder of the fair-haired man and shows the girl her tongue. Now the score is even, cheeky girl. Selina triumphs in her mind. The Duke's room. Dark Hair and Calcion are sitting by the fireplace, discussing what happened that evening. The woman asks the Duke if he is going to punish the pink-haired man. If he doesn't stop Fionnell, the dark-haired one will die. Did she really say she was going to kill you? Clarifies the man. Selina nods her head. Luckily, I'm stronger than Fionnell, so it's all good now. The Duke is surprised. He didn't think that Selina and Fionnell had such a difference in strength. The man simply does not know that in his world the woman regularly played sports, unlike the pink-haired woman. In addition, the dark-haired woman is taller than her rival. The man folds his hands together. You both look small. The woman shyly says that the duke only thinks so. He himself is still that giant. But it doesn't matter now. First, the dark-haired man and the duke must find Iril's killer. Fionnell would hardly be able to kill a human on her own. Maybe she made someone do it. The duke agrees with Selina. The woman closes her eyes. I was really very scared. Suddenly someone was sitting in the bushes watching me. Well done to you for enduring it, says the duke quietly. The dark-haired woman is not very pleased. She expected to hear a longer eulogy. The man reminds the woman that he has problems with eloquence. The dark-haired one stands up and sighs. I know, just feed me a good reward. You can tell from the woman's tone that she is a little disappointed. However, Selina tries not to show this to her husband. After all, they are both having a hard time right now. The woman turns her back to the fair-haired man and says that she will go to her room. He does not object. Selina takes a few steps and for some reason stops. 
If I go to bed alone now, I'll be scared, won't I? She says uncertainly. Maybe. The Duke begins to suspect something. Selena speaks to him in such a tone when she wants to ask for something, to put it mildly, strange. The dark-haired girl flashes her eyes and smiles nervously. She tells the Duke that they should sleep together. After these words, the woman freezes in place, waiting for an answer. The Duke opens his eyes wide. He doesn't know what to say to the dark-haired man. Sleeping in the same bed was not part of the plan, but maybe this way their relationship will look more realistic. Calcian's Bedroom A dark-haired woman dressed in a white nightgown quietly walks in. Excuse me, am I very late? The woman says that she was delayed because she could not choose clothes. The Duke is silent. This alarmed the dark-haired one. She looks at the bed. Calcion in a dark blue robe lies on a sheet strewn with rose petals. The man has a glass of red wine in his hands. The blonde smiles. You should always follow Lady Etiquette. Celine barely manages to make out his words. All because the man is holding a flower in his teeth. Dark-haired guesses that Calcion was forced to act this performance. A woman drops rose petals from a sheet with her hand. The blonde, who has already turned to the other side, tells Selena to go to bed sooner. They both had a rough day today. The dark-haired one crawls under the blanket and blows out the candle. A full moon enters the room through a large window. Selena lies on her back and looks at the ceiling. The woman can't sleep, so she decides to have a little chat with the Duke. She smiles and asks her husband on which side he usually sleeps. On the right or on the left? On anything, replies the fair-haired man. Unlike the woman, he almost plunged into the realm of Morpheus. However, the dark-haired man is not going to fall behind the duke so quickly. She throws off the blanket. Then I will turn to the left side. Used to sleep on it, you know. The blonde sighs. He is not surprised that this woman talks a lot even at night. A few minutes later, Celine turns to Calcian again. Duke? What? He answers in a sleepy voice. The woman asks if she can have another pillow. As you like... The fair-haired man starts to get annoyed. When will this woman calm down? Selina thanks her husband and reaches for a large pillow. The dark-haired woman wraps her arms around her. I like to sleep with my pillow in my arms. The duke is silent. He tries to pretend to be asleep. He hopes that Selina will leave him. Naive. The woman looks expectantly at the man. Blonde feels him. Of course I slept well in the office too, he says without turning to face the woman. All because there is somewhere to lay your head? asks the dark-haired man. Due to the specifics of my work, I fell asleep as soon as my head touched the table. The duke asks the woman to fall asleep. But Selina can't sleep because of her nerves. The man asks the woman why she is nervous. She sleeps next to the mighty duke of the north. Selina gently laughs. You think so? The blonde confidently says that this is a fact. In fact, the dark-haired man's eyes twinkle. It seems I'm more nervous now than I was on the first day on set. The man wonders why. Selina replies that she has never been in the same bed with a man. Never? The duke is surprised. The woman turns her head in his direction. Phew, and what did you just say? Some kind of delirium. The dark-haired man smiles. The man abruptly sits down on the bed. He looks displeased. No one has yet called his words delusional. Blonde orders Selene to apologize. The woman bursts into laughter. The angry duke's facial expression is a work of art in itself. The dark-haired girl says she didn't mean anything like that. In addition, the fact that she is in bed with a man for the first time is true. The woman runs her hand over the pillow. Selina closes her eyes, about to plunge into the realm of Morpheus. However, the Duke plans to take revenge on the woman for keeping him awake. Now it's his turn to talk a lot and about nothing. With reproach in his voice, the man says that Selina's remark was rude. The woman apologizes to the fair-haired man. By the way, she sits down on the bed. Do I look like a woman who dates a lot of men? The duke hurries to calm the dark-haired man. Like everything is not like that at all. He says that he thought so only because Selina is simply incredible at playing a seductress. The dark-haired one tilts his head to the side. It is not the first time that the duke praises Selina's abilities, but now his words sound somehow sincere and emotional. The man lowers his eyes. And even though I know you're playing, I'm really almost tempted sometimes. Selina smiles faintly. Duke is so cute when he's shy. And he is not cold and indifferent to anything, as people say. You just need to find an approach to the man. And it seems, Selina coped brilliantly with this task. The woman reaches out. Haha, right, I really play well. The Duke looks at the dark-haired man in silence. After a few minutes, she lies down on her left side and lightly hits the bed with her palm. The woman says that her mood improves every time she hears praise. 
Selena promises to give her all until the end of their performance. The change in the Duke's behavior motivates the woman quite well. She likes to watch how the man melts little by little. Calcion lies down next to Selena. The dark-haired woman closes her eyes. Now she is really going to sleep, like the Duke. They have a lot of work ahead of them. Morning. The dark-haired man opens his eyes and freezes in place. The fair-haired man lies facing the woman and hugs her by the waist with one hand. Selena feels awkward, and that's putting it very mildly. Dark-haired does not understand how she ended up in the arms of the Duke, although it is not so bad. The blonde is so warm. The woman is smiling. I'll come back, she scolds herself. Dark-haired remembers her promise not to fall in love with the Duke. Selena wants to carefully crawl out of her husband's arms when he wakes up. Suddenly, Calcian opens his eyes. Ha! A woman looks into a man's eyes. So you're not sleeping. The dark-haired woman found herself in a very awkward situation. The woman turns over on her stomach and buries her face into the pillow. For some reason, Selene is very ashamed of the fact that she slept all night in the arms of a fair-haired man. Although, of course, it is not her fault here. The Duke himself climbed up to hug. The woman sits down on the bed, mentally begging all the gods that Calcion is not in the mood to talk now. But the Duke is in a good mood today. The man speaks to Selena as if she knew he was awake. Lie, the woman blushes. Besides, I said that I used to sleep on my left side. The blonde laughs cheerfully. I'll remember. He noticed the dark-haired woman's strange reaction to what had happened. Yes, Selena being awkward is something new. Several hours pass. A woman and Calcian are standing at the castle gate. The couple are waiting for Lady Roselle, who is about to arrive. Selene quietly asks the Duke how much smarter his new guest is than Fionel. Calcion says not much, but the dark-haired man should still change his surveillance tactics so that no one suspects anything. Selena agrees. Dark-haired notes that his lordship has not met Fionel in person. Why did he come now? Is Lady Roselle important to her husband? Selena sighs and tells herself to stop. First, the Duke is not stupid enough to destroy a plan that he himself was involved in developing. Secondly, Calcion is not the property of a woman. Suddenly, Fionel jumps out from somewhere. She came to see the Duke. The pink-haired one runs up to the man and grabs his hand. How are you? Selena can barely contain her giggles when she sees the Duke's grim expression. A man really can't stand this cheeky girl. One of the knights says loudly that Lady Roselle is already here. Selena turns her head to the side. Finally, a blonde girl in a light pink dress and a hat with flowers of the same color gets out of the carriage that stopped not far from the castle a minute ago. The blonde smiles at Kaltsyanov. I'm sorry I came unannounced, Duke. The girl approaches the fair-haired man. He tells Roselle that he is glad to see her. The blonde gently laughs, covering her mouth with her hand. It was only worth thinking, and the body is already on the way. Do me a favor. Fionel crosses his arms over his chest. Phew, an actress. She ran as soon as she heard that I was here, the pink-haired man says with a mocking smile on his lips. The blonde turns to face Fionel and says that anyone would do that after learning about the pink-haired girl's unexpected visit. You came without an invitation, is an accusation. The dark-haired girl was surprised. Among rich aristocrats, it is customary to accuse each other of all sins. Selena decides to just watch the girls fight. The dark-haired man does not want to interfere in their sweet conversation. We're so close that you'd come such a long way to worry about me? Fionel asks disdainfully. The blonde proudly raises her chin. Here she is, Fiona Lechka. Like Selena, Roselle treats the pink-haired girl like a little cranky child. The blonde leans over to the girl. Of course I was worried about you. The pink-haired one frowns. Roselle laughs and says that the main purpose of her visit is to console the Duke. The dark-haired woman is surprised by the blonde's ability to insult people. Roselle takes out a fan from her pocket. Maybe you don't know this because of your age, but people can do two things at the same time. But a little girl like you can easily spoil both of them. Fioni responds with an insult to an insult. The pink-haired man is trying his best to control his anger. If the Duke hadn't been standing here, she would have pounced on Roselle and scratched out her eyes. The blonde asks the Duke if she can go to the castle. The dark-haired woman is surprised. She didn't notice me? Selena speculates why the blonde didn't greet her. Does she not consider the dark-haired woman a rival? A woman decides to draw attention to herself. Selena puts her arms around Calcian. Now shall we have breakfast? Asks the dark-haired man in a sweet tone. She presses her cheek against her husband's shoulder and closes her eyes. At the same time, the woman does not stop smiling. The blonde looks at Selena. Roselle folds her fan. My God, who is this? She doesn't even try to hide her disdain for Selena. Found her in the forest, says the Duke. 
The dark-haired man understands that his help should not be counted on. I'm Selena. Nice to meet you, she says to the blonde. Roselle tilts her head to one side. The girl claims that she is hearing such a name for the first time. She asks the dark-haired tactless, especially for a first meeting question. What kind of family are you from? Is my status so important? The dark-haired one won't give himself away. Even more important than my personality? Roselle's purple eyes flash angrily. The girl did not expect that the dark-haired man would respond with such refined rudeness. The blonde woman throws her handkerchief on the ground and orders the dark-haired man to pick it up. The woman ignores Roselle's words. The blonde turns to the duke and asks what good is dark hair. Like refusing to talk about a wedding a few years ago? Reminds the girl. There would be at least a tiny bit of benefit in that wedding, which is in a hunting dog. The blonde says that the duke repeated this attack several times. The dark-haired man purses his lips. The woman perceives Roselle's words as a subtle insult. The blonde offers her husband to make Selena the personal dog of the Lambert duchy. Roselle hides a hideous smile behind a fan. Dark-haired frowns. Just listen, Selena says to herself. In what a sweet tone she says such nasty things. Well, it's okay, I'll play again. The dark-haired woman will definitely prove to the blonde that she was wrong in choosing her rival. Selena's acting skills are second to none. A woman leans against a man's shoulder and lets out a laugh. Then maybe such a wonderful puppy should be raised as a guard dog? The dark-haired Roselle smiles widely. He will not offend the duke. The blonde grunts quietly. The behavior of the dark-haired girl interested the girl. I ask you to walk with me to the dining room, says Roselle. The duke agrees. However, the blonde turns not to him but to Selena. The girl wants to talk to Calcian's companion alone. The dark-haired woman is not at all surprised. She smiles sweetly at the girl. Of course, I will be happy to chat with you. However, I have to warn you that I haven't talked to young ladies for a long time because of my constant busy schedule. The duke is in a hurry to get out of here. Fionel tries to stop the man. Your majesty, maybe we'll go for a walk together. Calcion, without looking back, says that he has a lot to do. It's crazy. The pink-haired one stomps her foot. Now the girl does not look like a young lady, but like a five-year-old child whose parents did not buy a toy or chocolate bar. Fionel turns his back to the blonde and the dark-haired woman. The girl mutters that she is fed up with everything. She was so looking forward to meeting the duke, but he ran away. Flower petals fall from Fionel's dress. An irritated pink-haired girl goes to her room. Selina is left alone with Roselle. The blonde waved a fan and took several slow steps towards the woman. Selene wonders what this snake is up to. Does he want to say a few words to her? Not at all. The girl raises her leg and hits the dark-haired man in the stomach with all her might. Selena almost bends in half from the pain. What the hell was going on? She says in her mind. Bilyavka turned out to be an unpredictable person. Despite this, the dark-haired man tries to guess what Roselle will do next. The blonde rests her hands on the wall behind Selena, looming over the woman. Roselle glares angrily. She asks the dark-haired woman how much money she needs to disappear from the duke's life forever. Selena frowns. Fionel asked her a similar question only yesterday. These aristocrats are so banal in some moments, and boastful. The dark-haired one examines the girl. She doesn't seem rich enough to throw away money so easily. The woman confidently says that she is not here for a bunch of coins. The blonde lifts the dark-haired woman's chin with two fingers. Of course, it's not about the money. Roselle thinks Selena wants a bigger treat. However, not one dark-haired person claims this piece. Bilyavka is ready to pay as much as you want. Tell me. Roselle looks into the woman's eyes. How much do you want? The girl's voice is pretending to be kind. Selena realizes that the blonde does not take her seriously. Roselle considers the dark-haired girl to be a simple girl from a poor family who is ready to do anything to get a good job in life. Selena frowns. She is going to put the arrogant blonde in her place. You can do this with a decent answer. The dark-haired one grabs the girl's hand. And how much can you offer me? Selena smiles sweetly. She knows how much the manipulators are annoyed by the satisfied expression on the victim's face. The blonde arches a thin eyebrow. The dark-haired girl's question threw the girl off track. Selena explains that the basic principle of this type of deal is that the buyer offers the price first. Selena flicks her hair and twinkles her eyes playfully. I wonder how far the blonde will go. The woman will check it now. She touches her dress with her hand. Can you prepare a hundred of these? The dark-haired man lowers his head. The clothes on the woman can be equated with the cultural heritage of the duchy. No matter how rich Roselle is, she cannot afford such a sum. The blonde grits her teeth with rage. 
Selena has indeed set a very high price for her exit from the game. But maybe Roselle will get more if she takes the risk, the blonde is thinking. Buying a dark-haired one will help Roselle's relationship with the Duke at least a little. Let it be your way, says the girl. Selena is surprised. She didn't think Roselle would agree. There are two options why the girl did that. Either her family is richer than the dark-haired woman thought, or Roselle is willing to do anything for a place next to Calcyon, Selena thinks. The voice of reason tries to suppress the dark-haired woman's greed. The woman reminds herself that she needs to return to her world. Bilyavka says that she can give the required amount in any way. Selena's choice. The woman puts her hand to her cheek and sighs. It's a shame I can't retreat so quickly. Roselle frowns. It seems that the girl is beginning to suspect something. She says that Selena is playing a foul game. The amount that the dark-haired woman named was quite a lot. Is this not enough for Selena? The woman is smiling. It is clear that human greed knows no bounds, but there is one thing that the dark-haired man wants more than anything else. Selena isn't sure the young lady will be able to get the thing for her. Don't waste my time, the blonde rudely interrupts the woman. Rather say what you want. Selena looks away from the girl and pretends that she needs to think. Of course the dark-haired beast behaves this way on purpose. She wants to make fun of Roselle a little. After a minute, the woman finally names what she needs. Heart of the Duke, Selena smiles widely. Her words sound as sincere and true as possible. The blonde looks confused. She asks the woman if she is joking sometimes. The girl thought that Selena would ask her for immeasurable riches. There would be no problems with this. But the Duke's heart, it cannot be obtained. Only to conquer, not every person can do this. The dark-haired girl repeats in an innocent voice that she needs Calcyon's heart. At the same time, the woman did not violate the rules of the agreement. She simply offered her bet. The blonde puts her hand to her forehead and sighs. This is some kind of delusion. Roselle takes a step towards the dark-haired woman. The girl says that the one who takes the place of the Duchess is constantly risking her life. The blonde reminds the woman about the death of the Duke's bride. Do you want to die because of your greed? Asks Roselle. Or do you think that you can survive and get everything? The dark-haired man silently looks at the blonde. But he behaves completely illogically. She scolds the woman for wanting to become the Duke's bride, and at the same time she herself risks her life, chasing her husband. Why is Roselle so sure that no one will want to kill her if she becomes Calcyon's wife? There are two options. Perhaps the girl relies on her family. She hopes that mommy and daddy will be able to protect her from all troubles. And maybe she is the killer of Irail. For some reason, the blonde's name is on the list of suspects. The dark-haired woman shrugs her shoulders and says that the story with the Duke's bride did not scare her. Then I won't be so greedy. I don't need money, adds the woman. The blonde already has more than she can swallow. She has status, jewels, and other benefits. Dark hair does not claim anything from this list. All she needs is Calcian's heart. But Roselle does not need the status that marriage to a fair-haired man can give her. Isn't that what you're after? Selena is somewhat surprised. The blonde twinkles her eyes ominously. I can take as much as I want, and get even more power if the need arises. Dark haired swallows saliva. The woman feels uneasy. She does not understand what Roselle's purpose is. The blonde is different from Fionnel, who desires the Duke's love. Roselle does not need this, nor the status and wealth of her husband. Why then does she run after Calcyon and knock on the thresholds of his castle? The girl sharply turns sideways to Selina. If you don't value your own life, you really deserve to die, says the blonde dryly. The dark-haired man does not even look at the girl. The day passed unnoticed. Time to have dinner. Candles are burning in the banquet hall. The table is covered with various snacks. There are also several bottles of good wine here. Too good a place for two young ladies to meet, don't you think? The welcome dinner at first glance seems peaceful and calm. But in fact, this is a battlefield for aristocratic women. Selina looks at her cutlery, trying to remember what to use and when. Dark-haired does not want to embarrass himself in front of Fionnel and Roselle. Though what does it matter what they think? We already have a bad relationship. I have nothing to lose, says the woman in her mind. She takes a piece of bread from the plate. The dark-haired one bites it and smiles. Yummy? The woman had never tasted such delicious pastries as in the Duke's castle. Fionnel stares at Selina. The pink-haired woman guessed that the woman did not come from an aristocratic family, but that she did not know the elementary rules of etiquette. Fionnel looks at Roselle. The blonde nods. Looks like these two are up to something. The blonde tells the dark-haired one that her mannerisms are quite funny. Selina glares angrily. She hoped that these two chickens would give her a normal meal. 
But no, they cannot live without gossip, insults, and intrigues. Roselle, with a nasty smile on her lips, asks the woman in which district they eat like that. Maybe Selena learned etiquette from the local wolves. Dark Haired takes another bite of bread. Oh God, are there animals that eat pastries as well as meat? I will be very grateful if you tell me about them. It doesn't matter what you eat, says the blonde confidently. If you don't eat like a human, you're no different from an animal. Fionel the dog also eats bread. The pink-haired one agrees with this. She says that she loves her pet very much, but she never eats at the same table with her. It is not cultural. Fionel says that the dark hair spoiled her appetite. The blonde waved her hand. Oh, I also wanted to eat too much, but I think it's not Lady Selina's fault that she doesn't know how to use cutlery. The blonde hints that the dark-haired one grew up among the wolves of Landbird. Roselle tells the duke that she can teach Selene to use a fork. The woman flashes her eyes angrily. It is a bit strange to see how two aristocrats who hate each other have united to fight against a common enemy. Selena picks up a knife. The woman smiles at Roselle. You don't seem to understand something, madam. I wouldn't pick up food crumbs from the floor for anything if I were an animal. Roselle directs a questioning look at the woman. Selena sharply pierces a huge piece of meat with the tip of a knife. Juice flies in all directions. Aristocrats try to avoid him so as not to stain their dresses. The dark-haired woman picks up a knife with a piece of meat and says that if she were an animal, she would cut Roselle's throat. Because I prefer meat, adds Selena. Fionel begins to tremble with fear. Pink hair thinks Selena is a crazy savage. The girl mentally begs God so that the dark-haired one does not pounce on her. The woman notices Fionel's reaction. Selena smiles and comforts the pink-haired girl. The dark-haired one says that Fionel does not look appetizing at all. The girl is too thin. The pink-haired one lowers his head. In any other situation, she would have yelled at anyone who dared to say that to her, but not now. The girl tries not to raise her voice. Roselle, unlike the pink-haired one, does not look frightened but rather surprised. That blonde is quickly mastering herself. She wipes her mouth with a napkin. Actually, it's not about upbringing or culture, Roselle begins. Your actions, Selena, are very similar to the actions of an animal. And the eyes also belong to the beast, if I'm not mistaken. The dark-haired one smiles widely. She says that the duke fell in love with her precisely because of this feature. The woman offers Roselle to behave in the same way, in order to attract the attention of the man. The white woman pulls a biting smile on her face. The girl is ready to strangle Selena. Roselle is annoyed that the dark-haired one is better than her in everything. The blonde touches a strand of her hair. Roselle knew that his lordship adored wild animals, but that was it. It's hard for a girl to believe this. A status is a status, and it is difficult to refuse a special situation. What nobility. The atmosphere in the hall is very tense. The duke decides to intervene in the lady's conversation before it is too late. The man puts his elbows on the table and says that the Tiolan family is in a really special situation. It was the Tiolan who turned away from the Lenberg duchy when it was just trying to strengthen its position in the capital. And when Calcyon did not suit the girl in terms of status, she broke off the engagement. The blonde begins to make excuses, like all because of her father. The dark-haired girl watching this picture can barely contain her laughter. This girl is courting him, pure water farce. Herzog says that maybe then everything turned out for the better. The status that a man would get after marrying Roselle would only limit the duke. Calcium is the man of the north. He is close to nature and sleep on the bare cold earth. The blonde crosses his arms over his chest and smiles. He counterattacked Roselle. The blonde lowers her eyes and apologizes to her husband. Selena moves her chair to the girl's chair and claps her hands. God, the Duke and I are made for each other. The dark-haired woman says that she also appreciates nature and the peace it gives to people. The woman also loves wild animals. They are so powerful and free. The Duke laughs dryly. He flashes his eyes and tells the blonde that the status of the Lindbird family is very high now, much higher than the status of stubborn Tyolan. The man asks Roselle what she will do. The girl raises her eyebrows. The duke's words touched her. Bilyavka perfectly understands that he still cannot forgive her rejection. Roselle considers the fair-haired boy to be an offended boy. However, she will not tell him this, of course. The girl decides to leave the duke behind and return to Selena's attack. But the man does not allow the girl to water the dark-haired with dirt. He asks the blonde why she came to him if she has nothing to say except insults. Servants enter the room. They carry neat stacks of papers. Bilyavka says that one of the reasons for her visit to Lenbird Castle is negotiations with the Duke on behalf of the aristocrats of the capital. The man looks at the documents. One of the maids takes out about a hundred envelopes from her pocket and places them on the fair-haired man's table. Bilyavka says that the residents of the capital, who were bored without the Duke, 
gave him letters. The girl raises one of the envelopes to her lips and mischievously asks the man if he can answer each letter. Sounds like a challenge. Dark hair drills the blonde with a displeased look. This snake knows that Calcyon can't stand the aristocrats of the capital and has come with letters from them anyway. It seems that the herbivores want to take revenge. Although Calcyon is the king of the jungle, he can't do anything about a herd of rhinos. The dark-haired woman is upset. She thought that the victory was in their pocket, and the blonde had an ace up her sleeve. This meal was the first defeat of Calcyon and Selene. Deep night, the blonde is sitting in his office. The man reads the letters, sorts them, and gives answers to those he considers important. The duke sighs. He puts down the stack of letters and leans back in his chair. The man has been writing letters for several hours, and he hasn't even reached the middle. Well, the blonde brought him everything he had. Duke mentally curses her for this. The husband's eyes are already hurting from continuous work with papers. Suddenly, the fair-haired man hears some noise outside the door of the room. Calcium listens. He recognizes Selena's voice. The woman tries to prove to the servants that the duke needs support now. Dark-haired quietly enters the office. Calcion sits down on the sofa and takes another leaf in his hands. I'm sorry. Selena stops a few steps away from her husband. Were we too loud? The man closes his eyes and asks the dark-haired man in a displeased tone, Why is it possible to talk to the servants in the middle of the night? You need to sleep at such a late hour. The blonde, as we already know, is in a bad mood. Selene's talkativeness usually doesn't anger Calcion. It's just that now the man is trying to fix something. The dark-haired one understands everything. She silently waits for her husband to allow her to sit down or to tell her to leave. The woman is wearing a white nightgown. The dark-haired one knows that maybe this is still a revealing outfit. However, the servants insisted that she wear it. The girl says this in a shy tone. She is uncomfortable discussing such things with the blonde. The man cannot take his eyes off Selena. She looks like an ancient Greek goddess. Incredible beauty. As for the servants, the dark-haired man should not worry. The duke knows firsthand about their special love of advice. He tells the girl just not to pay attention and asks her to sit down. Selena sighs and sinks down on the sofa next to the duke. The dark-haired one feels awkward that they are sitting so close to each other. Calcium, it seems, too. He covers his face with a piece of paper, pretending to be busy reading a letter. The woman gets up so as not to worsen the situation, but after a few seconds, the dark-haired one sinks down on the couch again. She thought she and the duke should get used to close contact. Not much can happen at a banquet. The woman notices that the duke's ears are burning. The dark-haired woman closes her eyes. Yes, this is a rather unusual situation for her. Selena did not often communicate with men in her world. The duke looks at the letter in silence, pretending to see something important there. Selena, of course, knows that this is not true, but remains silent. You don't need to worry your husband even more. A few minutes pass. The room is so quiet that you can hear the ticking of the wall clock. Selena thinks about how to fix the situation. Eventually, the woman decides to start a conversation. This should distract the duke a little from his embarrassing thoughts. The dark-haired man smiles and tells Kaltsyonov that he rather boldly intervened in the lady's conversation at dinner. The fair-haired man calmly replies that such verbal duels are commonplace for Lady Roselle. But today she was particularly angry. Because of rejection, suggests Selena. Yes, the duke sighs. Mother wanted to marry me to the daughter of any famous aristocrat. She decided that Teolin would be a good option. But we, or rather, they refused me. Selena jokingly says that she is impressed by the duke's memory. Many years have passed since the rejection, and he still wants revenge on Teolin. The woman's words amuse Calcion. The man says that anger does not allow him to forget an old grudge. The dark-haired girl puts her hand to her cheek and twinkles in her eyes. Maybe, the woman begins cautiously. You're not angry, but sorry. The man is indignant. How could Selena even think of such a thing? So that he, the northern duke, regretted the rejection of some spoiled girl. The dark-haired one sighs. She says it's just an innocent guess. You should not react so sharply. Besides, Calcyon himself said that Roselle was beautiful and famous. That's what my mother thinks, corrects the man. Selene wonders what he thinks about Lady Teolin. The blonde says that this girl annoys him with her stupid and sometimes provocative questions. Now the dark-haired man understood the true reason for Calcyon's anger towards Roselle. The woman agrees with his opinion about the young aristocrat. She threatens so skillfully. The duke asks Selene what exactly TNL told her. How long does it take for you to leave Calcyon? The woman tries to parody Roselle's voice. The man sighs tiredly. He is used to the arguments of young ladies for his heart. He wonders how much Selena sold it for. The woman waves her hand. 
told her to pay a hundred times more for the dress I wore. Dark Haired says that the outfit of the former Duchess is simply incredible. Maybe even a music group from Selena's world would appreciate the dress. The man is darkly silent. Selena asks him what happened. The woman guesses that, most likely, the Duke was confused by her words about money. Too many? The dark-haired woman begins to worry. Calcium is thinking. He timidly says that the amount that Selena named is equal to Lenbird's fortune for twenty years. The dark-haired man opens his eyes wide. She did not expect this. Dark-haired wonders if the Duke's wife's place is really that valuable. Calcium, not looking at Selene, says that the woman should not have come this far. The Tyolans have no less wealth than the Northern Duke. The man crosses his arms over his chest. The dark-haired one turns her head to the side. Rosal said she had enough money. What is the reason? Selene gives the Duke an appraising look, trying to understand why this cold man needs Tyolan. Of course he is beautiful, but that is very little. The Duke notices that he is being watched. The man seems outraged by this fact. What? He doesn't understand why Selena is staring at him like that. Is this one of her next games? The dark-haired woman decides to ask her husband again about the reason for Teolan's courtship. Calcion shines with cold eyes. He doesn't really want to talk about it. But at the same time, the fair-haired man understands that Selena will not lag behind until he gives an answer. The restless woman tries to guess. Face? The man sighs. No. Body? Asks the dark-haired man in a conspiratorial tone. Duke rolls his eyes. The look on his face lets Selena know that she was right. The blonde raises his hand to his chin. That sounds more real. Selena is amused by the Duke's pride. Now he's acting like a smug turkey. The woman notices an envelope on the table that is different from the others and decides to change the subject. Dark-haired asks Calcian what about the letter. The man takes an unusual envelope in his hands. The woman reads the addressee's name. Crown Prince? The blonde is surprised that Selena can read a letter written in a foreign language to her. It seems that the translation bracelet does not only work with spoken language. Dark hair tells the Duke that he can safely ignore a letter from a member of the royal family. The Duke freezes in place. He forgot that Selena still doesn't know the local rules very well. If you take into account how long she is here, then this is absolutely normal. The fair-haired man says in a calm tone that he cannot but read this letter. Larson aspires to be king. Among all the ruler's children, this crown prince is the most influential candidate. Although the Duchy of Lenbird is not the most pleasant place, everyone wants to get this piece of land. The blonde cannot affect this in any way because he is only a vassal under supervision. The man puts his hand to his head. I don't want to meet him, but I have to. At the banquet in honor of the country's tricentennial, aristocrats from all over the country gather. Calcian cannot refuse the invitation. Selina tries to cheer up the duke. All the same, they would have to visit the capital someday. However, Calcion is not reassured by these words. The woman crosses her arms over her chest. I'm worried too, but everything will be fine. She asks the fair-haired man if he can play his role. The man is silent. Selina notices his insecurity. The woman thinks what to do. If the duke is not moved now, there is no telling what will happen at the royal banquet. Selina had a plan. The woman stands up sharply. Calcion watches her. A second later, the dark-haired man is already sitting on the duke's lap. The man recoils. Selina gives him a seductive smile. Then her expression changes to an innocent one. The woman says in a child's voice that she wants to go to the capital. The dark-haired man does not take his eyes off Calcian. The man is amazed by this change in Selina's behavior. A few minutes ago, this woman was calmly talking to him. But now she is capricious, as if she were five years old. The dark-haired woman begins to whine. I want to go to the capital. Take me with you. The man tries to calm the woman down. You're going to go. Just stop. However, she is not satisfied with such an answer. Selena says she doesn't want to go, as a nice compliment to the Duke. Calcion finally figures out that she's playing her part again. Only the man does not understand why Selena does this. No one is looking at them now. The woman sighs sadly and says that the Duke has very little practice. With such training, he is unlikely to be able to deceive the aristocrats, who have mastered the art of lying for years. A woman puts her hands on her belt. Train in your spare time, too. The man lowers his head. Selina tells the duke that he cannot lie, even if he dies and comes back to life. I practiced, adds the woman. I wanted you to take me with you. However, the duke did not give her the opportunity to finish this little performance. The dark-haired man does not know when the man will stop being petrified in such situations. Moonlight penetrates the room. Selina tells the blonde that they will go to the capital together. 
and it is not discussed. The woman smiles at the duke. I'm going to sleep. Come when you can handle the work. The man remains alone in his office, but the fair-haired man is in no hurry to return to reading boring letters, permeated through and through with false politeness. All Calcyon's thoughts were filled with Selene. The duke can't act, not because he's a bad actor, but because he has feelings for this woman. Of course, her husband will not tell her about it. Morning. The sun illuminates the mountains, the tops of which are covered with loose snow. Broad-winged hawks fly around Lenbird Castle, perching on bare tree branches. Selena's room. A woman is sitting at a table. Two maids are standing next to her. The dark-haired girl is trying to decide what to wear. The thing is that Roselle invited Selena to a tea party. The maids guiltily say that the Duke did not hand over new sets of clothes for the dark-haired woman. The woman smiles. Then tell Lady Teolin that I won't be able to come. The maids are amazed. Not a single person had yet dared to refuse invitations from families with a higher status. But the dark-haired man doesn't care. She won't be able to come, even if she really wants to. The woman simply has no clothes. The maid says it's not a problem. Teolan allowed the dark-haired woman to come in anything, Selena thinks. It is clear that Roselle decided to humiliate her. The blonde's words, which we have not mentioned here, were not very polite. A woman puts a cup of tea on a saucer. The dark-haired one picks up the quill. What about him not being able to take me away? Will he lose all strength and find himself in a hopeless situation? The maid lowers her head. Selina realizes that she will have to go to the tea party with Tyolan, if only in order not to let the fair-haired one down. The woman asks to convey this answer to the duke. The maid silently thanked the dark-haired woman and quickly leave the room. The woman guesses that Tyolan threatened the unfortunate girls. This is very low. However, the dark-haired man is not going to back down. Roselle will not be able to intimidate her. Twenty minutes pass. A woman steps out onto the balcony of the Tyolan estate. Roselle turns his head in her direction. The girl freezes when she sees how Selina is dressed. A lady, says the blonde stuttering. She did not expect that the woman would have the courage to appear at Tyonel Manor like this. Selina, unlike Roselle, remains calm. A woman approaches Roselle. The cold floor stings the dark-haired woman's legs unpleasantly, but she ignores it. The woman smiles widely at the blonde. If you ordered me to come, even if I don't have any clothes, then be ready. In any case, it's better than rags, right? Dark-haired reminds the purpose of his arrival. You wanted to talk, if I'm not mistaken. The blonde flashes her eyes angrily. The girl did not think that after dinner Selena would behave like this. The woman looks innocently at Roselle. Mentally, dark-haired triumphs. She managed to rub the nose of this cheeky girl. A blonde should learn to be responsible for her words. Roselle raises the fan to her face, trying to hide her displeasure. The girl says that appearing at a tea party in a nightgown is a gross violation of etiquette. The dark-haired girl replies with feigned pity in her voice that she simply had no other clothes. I definitely said that you can come even in worn-out clothes, notes Roselle. The girl removed the word rags, which she called the dark-haired woman's dress. The woman says that her worn clothes are unfortunately torn because of the duke. Roselle opens her eyes wide. Then she abruptly turns her back to Selena, not wanting to show the dark-haired woman her emotions. The girl thinks that the duke spent the night with this insolent woman. Well, it is partly so. Only Roselle did not need to know that the fair-haired man and Selena hardly touched each other. The dark-haired woman is pleased with herself. A woman and a blonde sit down at the table. Roselle makes a fan. I get out of the shower in such clothes. Vulgar lies reveal intentions. The girl makes a counterattack. The dark-haired woman replies with a smile that sending invitations with rude words is not very nice either. The blonde closes her eyes. If you had followed the rules of etiquette, I would not have mentioned the appearance. Roselle says, as if she didn't even think that the dark-haired one wouldn't understand the obvious. Selena lets out a scornful laugh. Ha! Huh? Shouldn't we consider another topic? The blonde squeezes a smile out of herself and says that they are not in the kind of relationship to know the personal details of each other's lives. However, Roselle promises the dark-haired one not to forget the situation with the dress. Selena puts her hand to her chin. Be kind. No matter how much you intimidated your messengers, you did not learn anything about the woman whom the duke brought in person. The dark-haired one deliberately emphasizes the last word. She also warns Roselle that soon they will see each other more often. The blonde is surprised. With a nasty smile on her lips, she says that she doesn't quite understand what the dark-haired man means. Roselle has a lot to do in the capital, so she will leave the duke's castle for a while. Because of this, she will not be able to communicate with Selena more often. 
The woman smiles and says that they will see each other in the capital. The dark-haired girl received an invitation to the anniversary of the state. Roselle freezes in place. The blonde did not expect such a development of events. She again made a mistake in her calculations. She underestimated her opponent. Selina turned out not to be the wild fool she tried to be at dinner. Will you go with his lordship to the capital? Asks the blonde. Selina says she asked the duke to take her with him, and he didn't say no. The blonde cannot believe that Calcion agreed to accompany the commoner. This can damage his reputation. The dark-haired one laughs. Ha ha, our duke didn't even mention his sense of self-worth while I was sitting on his lap. Roselle frowns. She perfectly understands what the dark-haired man is implying. The woman tries with all her might to prove that she and the duke had a perfect night. At first the blonde didn't believe it, but Selina's brilliant acting shook the girl's confidence. Roselle stands up sharply and slams her palms on the table. His lordship is so illegible? She asks loudly. The dark-haired one looks at Roselle. Selina, a girl and a woman hear someone's voice. The blonde turns her head to the side and freezes in place. The girl sees Calcian approaching the dark-haired woman's chair. Your Highness. Roselle puts on the mask of innocence again. The man is silent. This time he will not fall for the tricks of the blonde. Roselle curses Selina mentally. It seems to her that the woman is somehow involved in the Duke's sudden arrival. Tears welled up in the eyes of the dark-haired woman. The woman sobs softly. Roselle is surprised. How did she suddenly cry? The girl does not know that Selina was taught this in acting courses. The Duke leans over to the dark-haired woman. Selina! He looks worried, but it's just a game. Yes, no matter how strange it sounds, the fair-haired man was finally able to get into his role. The role of a man who is ready to protect his beloved from aristocratic snakes. The dark-haired one stands up and falls into Calcian's arms, nuzzling his nose into his chest. Duke, Duke, the woman repeats. The dark-haired man is happy in his mind. The blonde's guesses about Selina's involvement in the appearance of her husband turned out to be true. The dark-haired woman knew that the young Teolan had invited her to the tea party to humiliate and intimidate her. That is why Selina asked the servants to give the duke a sheet of paper asking him to come. The blonde arrived at Teolan Manor forty minutes after receiving the note from the woman. On the way, the duke rehearsed his role. The man grunts. He looks up at the blonde. Roselle. The girl lowers her head. Yes, your grace. The blonde tries to hide her irritation, but she doesn't succeed very well. The duke flashes his blue eyes and sternly tells Roselle that she has no right to treat his chosen one like that. The man hugs the dark-haired man tighter. Roselle bites her lip. The fact that the man called Selina his chosen one affected the girl quite a bit. The blonde's hope of returning Calcian's affection begins to crumble. Roselle clenches her hands into fists and turns her head to the side. I know. The girl would gladly say a few kind words to the duke, but she understands that this will only make the situation worse. Selina is still in the arms of the blonde. The woman admits to herself that she feels safe next to Calcian. Of course, she wouldn't be offended anyway, but still. The duke rests his chin on the dark-haired woman's head. Fortunately, Selina warned me this time, so it wasn't difficult to catch Roselle, he says in his mind. But what if Kalchinov had not been informed about Roselle's despicable plan, no matter what happens? But how dare Roselle act like that? The duke was not jokingly angry. Selina looks away. The woman sees that Roselle is standing with her head down. It seems that the girl will not continue the fight in this round. The dark-haired one is certainly happy about it. But at this moment, Selina is interested in something else. A woman wants to leave in her memory more pleasant memories of tea. Selina begins to burrow into the duke's chest again and begins to tremble. She quietly says that she is very cold. I want to go back, the woman sobs. Please hug me. The duke freezes for a moment. The man was a little confused. This was not in the script. But the fair-haired man understands that he must get over the offense. Not now. Calcium gathers with thoughts. After a few seconds, he takes off his blue-gray cloak and wraps it around his dark hair. Then the man takes the woman in his arms. Selina puts her hand on the fair-haired man's shoulder, mentally thanking the duke for his courage. The tea party is over, Roselle's husband says dryly. The blonde bites her lip. She is upset and annoyed at the same time. The girl mentally promises herself to be more careful. Selina is not going to die anymore. That's it, adds the fair-haired man in a firm tone. The man is heading for the exit from the balcony. The blonde, clutching the fabric of her dress with thin fingers, looks after the couple. The dark-haired one closes her eyes and smiles smugly. Perfect. Suddenly the woman has another idea, how to sweeten the victory. Selina looks cautiously over the duke's shoulder. Roselle stands still. The girl does not say anything. 
but from her facial expression it is already clear that she is ready to kill the dark-haired man. Selena smiles innocently and makes an obscene gesture to the blonde. The ritual of teasing rivals seems to be becoming habitual for the dark-haired woman. After a few seconds, the woman removes her hand. It is better not to abuse your opportunities. Calcion, by the way, is not against such behavior of his beloved. He, like Selene, considers Teolan a cheeky girl who should be brought back from heaven to earth. The blonde's fingers have turned white. That's how hard she squeezes her dress with them. Roselle glares angrily. Blood congealed on the girl's lips. The blonde looks creepy. It seems that in a second Roselle will catch up with the Duke to take revenge for the humiliation. But when the girl remembers the probable consequences of her anger, the desire to rush at the happy couple immediately disappears. The Duke and the dark-haired man had already arrived at Lenbird Castle. The woman admires the fair-haired man. You are such a good man. It was just incredible. I just called, and you came, looked hostily at Roselle, and hugged me. The dark-haired one squeezes the Duke's cheeks. The man does not like it very much, but he tolerates it. I was worried about your behavior in an unexpected situation, but you did it, says the woman. She is proud of her fair hair. The man smiles with the corner of his mouth. Selena's praise motivates him to work on his acting skills. Calcian enters his room and carefully lowers the dark-haired man onto the couch. The man says he called a tailor for the woman. Selena is surprised, because she only gave the note in the morning. The Duke tried to arrange everything as quickly as possible. A woman cannot walk around with a castle in a nightgown. The dark-haired one is glad that Calcion took care of that. Now she has one less problem. Has the Northern Duke finally really entered the aristocratic battles? It looks like it is. The man is going to tell Selena about some nuances. The nuances of life in his world. The blonde sits down on the sofa. Today and the days to come, you will have to face members of high society. Selene needs to know the situations in which she may find herself alone with aristocrats. Now the woman is doing her job perfectly, but she may face a stronger opponent. That is why the man wants to give the dark-haired woman a weapon. Selena doesn't quite understand what he's talking about. The Duke grunts. Knowledge! The fair-haired man folds his hands on his knees. There are twenty days left before the trip to the capital. During this time, the man wants to teach the woman manners and the art of communicating with nobles. Selena opens her eyes wide. The woman is surprised that the Duke wants to make her an aristocrat. Shouldn't I have behaved ill-mannered and sometimes even vulgar? Why such changes? The blonde says that he is not going to completely remake the image of Selena. It would just be nice if a woman knew about all the secret tricks of the nobles in dialogues. The dark-haired woman raises her hand to her chin. The woman agrees with the duke. It is impossible to find out secret information without knowing about the communication techniques of the rich. And the duke, a man who cannot stand the arrogance of members of high society, is annoyed by this fact. Dark-haired suggests that the man is worried about Lenbird's reputation. Like commoner, Selene can disgrace the ducal family. The fair-haired man convinces the woman that this is not the case at all. He just can't see Selena being ignored by others. The woman freezes in place for the second time in a day. The duke's behavior surprises her more and more. Dark-haired does not understand what is happening with Calcion. Is he trying to be romantic? However, after a second, a less pleasant guess creeps into the woman's head. Selena narrows her eyes. He wants to cut my salary. Does he consider me a slave or something? The dark-haired woman is outraged. She can't just leave this grudge. The woman asks the Duke if he has studied the art of secret communication. As Selena expected, the blonde answered, No. Why should a man who hardly attends various events learn to talk to aristocrats? When the dark-haired girl offers him to study with her, he refuses. The woman puts her hands on her belt. Are you even listening to me? I'm not just saying all this. Selena believes that the blonde just needs to get used to the language of the noble society. The woman intends to get to the enemy camp. This is a dangerous business. If something happened, the dark-haired man would have to give the duke a special signal. To understand him, a man must master secret communication. Calcium sighs. He agrees to study with Selena. Still, the woman is right. You need to be ready for everything. One wrong step and they could die. The dark-haired woman is glad that the man listened to her but the woman wants to torment him a little more. She crosses her arms over her chest. You can't tell from the look on your face that you're happy. Selena offers the blonde not just to study, but to compete. The woman stands up sharply and points a finger at the duke. You are quite a strong opponent, but I will still win. The man is surprised. He never competed with a woman, and in general the word competition is associated with sword fighting. Selena says that everything is much simpler. All you have to do is pretend to be hungry for knowledge. The woman rubs her hands together. 
like you'll get a praise sticker if you do everything right. The man had never heard of such a way of motivating people, which was not surprising at all. Duke and Selina grew up in different worlds. Dark Hair points out that the student from Calcyon is bad. The Duke is angry. Where do these conclusions come from? The woman ignores this question. Instead, she calls out the date of the first round. Tomorrow. The man wonders how they will compete. The Duke hopes that he will be able to convince the dark-haired man to abandon this strange idea. However, Selina has already decided everything. We will invite the master of aristocratic chatter. The fair-haired man smiles faintly. At times, the enthusiasm of the dark-haired woman annoys him, but her persistence and attention to detail cannot but be admired. In addition, Selene managed to arouse excitement in the Duke. The man notes that the woman, unlike him, knows almost nothing about high society. The dark-haired woman is convinced that this can be easily fixed. Remember, she says, we learn together, and the one who loses must make a wish. Herzog does not object. Selena stretches and yawns. The brunette is tired today. She wants to lie down until the tailor comes. He most likely should come in the evening. The blonde is a little surprised. The fact is that the fair-haired man ordered the tailor to hurry. It is unlikely that he would ignore the words of the northern lord. Dark-haired is silent. Calcyon already wants to ask the woman where she got the information about the tailor's tardiness, but doesn't have time. A red-haired guy bursts into the room. By the heavy breathing of the young man, it is easy to guess that he was running. The tailor, barely having time to swallow air, greets the duke and recommends himself to Selene. The redhead's name is Dwin. He tells the duke that he tried to come as soon as possible. Selena closes her eyes. She understands that Calcyon is not as simple as it seems. Yes, maybe the man is a bad actor but he knows how to control people and intimidate them. The Duke coldly says that the tailor can get down to business. The red-haired man takes out a centimeter from his pocket. The young man begins to wrap the ribbon around the Duke. He is surprised. Dwin mutters the blonde's body parameters under his breath. Arm length, leg length, etc. The guy can't help but make a flattering comment to the man. You have a great figure, sir. Calcyon, staring at the wall, asks the tailor what he is doing. The guy's green eyes sparkle. I'm taking your measurements. I can't sew clothes the way I want. Suddenly something will be too big or too small. Suddenly the Duke slaps the red-haired man on the head with his hand. Didn't they tell you I ordered a dress, not a suit? The man rasps through clenched teeth. Dwin says in a trembling voice that unisex clothing has been quite popular lately. The Duke orders the barman to shut up with one look. Don't be angry, Selina smiles. The woman likes the immediacy and sincerity of the tailor and his strange, sometimes too much ideas do not raise any questions in the dark-haired woman. Creative personalities are crazy. The Duke grunts. He is not very happy with Dwin's behavior. Still, Calcyon is a conservative person. He does not accept all these newfangled concepts. However, the man is well aware that now is not the time to show his character. The Duke turns his back to Selina and orders the tailor to take the woman's measurements. The redhead runs up to Selina. He hands her the clothes to take measurements. The dark-haired girl smiles warmly at the boy, wanting to calm him down a bit. Dwin thanks the woman. What else is this? The Duke's stern voice is heard. It seemed to the man that the tailor was flirting with his chosen one. The guy immediately apologizes. He says he didn't mean anything like that. It's just a courtesy. A few minutes pass. Selina stands in the middle of the room, patiently waiting for Dwin to finish his measurements. The dark-haired woman feels awkward. But not through the tailor, no. It's about the Duke who keeps a close eye on the red-haired man's work. The man asks how much longer. He was tired of waiting. Selina reminds her husband that he still has a lot of work to do. Maybe you should go to your office, suggests the woman. But the blonde refuses. Selina is disappointed by his response, but doesn't show it. Instead, she makes another attempt to get rid of the Duke for a while. I can choose my own clothes, but the man is still stubborn. He says he wants to help. Selina sighs. The sun enters the room through large windows. Natural light helps Davina to do his work better. After a few minutes, the man finishes taking measurements. The redhead says that the Duke and Selina can rely on him. The tailor will make the dark-haired woman the most beautiful woman in Lenbird. You have enough confidence, says Selina in a joking tone. The woman approaches the Duke and puts her hand on his shoulder. The man tenses up. The dark-haired one strokes his neck and says quietly, The Duke said I'm the prettiest even without clothes. Calcium hardens in place. He does not remember such words. The woman narrows her eyes and smiles mischievously. Of course, the fair-haired man could not say that because, at least, he had never seen her naked. Selina lied. She lied to take revenge on her husband. He did not want to go to his office voluntarily. 
A redhead watching this picture says that the Duke and his bride are very hot. Calcium frowns. Another second, and the man scowls at the red-haired man. Selina can't let that happen. The woman asks the tailor why he does not work in the capital. He says that it's about orders. Aristocrats of Lenbert update their wardrobe more often than metropolitan workers, and nobles have more money. Selina smiles. Show me your best designs? The dark-haired woman wants to find something for herself in which she can come out to people. The tailor pushes a piece of paper to the woman with one of the sketches. Elegant, and at the same time a modern dress. It seems to the boy that this outfit will emphasize Selina's beauty. The woman is amazed. Wow, I have to admit that it is very nice. Dark-haired asks the duke's opinion about the proposed dress. Not bad. Fair-haired in his repertoire. The tailor tells Selina that he can sew five similar dresses from different types of fabric. It seems to the woman that it is too much. Still, wearing the same clothes, even in different colors, is quite boring. The tailor says that this is what the former duchess did. The dark-haired one smiles. She has lived in this world for only a few weeks, and the habits of the bourgeoisie already seem unworthy to her. Buying clothes just in case or for the mood is a strange activity, and harmful to the environment, and not only for him. While people in one part of the world wear rags, others simply throw away their clothes if they are in a bad mood. The tailor notices the pensive expression on Selina's face. You can make the same dress from the same fabric, Dwin says cautiously. The dark-haired one sighs in relief. Now a woman cannot worry about the pollution of the planet. However, the duke intervenes in the conversation. No, make dresses from seven types of fabric. Selina freezes. The blonde once again ruined everything. The tailor begins to list the colors for the dress, but the dark-haired man stops him. She says Dwin can choose a color for each design. The dark-haired woman wants dresses of different styles. At least such things will not be considered a mass market. The woman raises her index finger. Remember, one color per design. The duke is not very happy with the dark-haired woman's decision. In his opinion, luxury is one of the main attributes of an aristocrat. The woman is thinking. Of course she doesn't like Calcian's words. Dark hair does not understand the benefits of a luxurious life at all. You're just wasting money and doing nothing. Although the duke can be understood, he is very concerned about his reputation. Dark hair wonders if there is a way not to disgrace the duke in the eyes of the nobles, and at the same time stick to his principles. After a few seconds, the woman has a good idea. Selina tells the blonde about it. The man turns his head in her direction. Calcion is not at all surprised. He was already used to the sudden attacks of creativity of the dark haired woman. Selina winks conspiratorially at her husband. Don't worry, my idea is very aristocratic. Aristocratic? This word interested the fair haired man. What did you invent there? But Selina is in no hurry to answer, and not at all because he wants to anger the Duke. No. The true reason for the dark haired woman's silence is completely different. The idea of a woman is completely delusional. The dark haired girl really hopes that she will be able to fool the Duke and the tailor. Still, she is an outstanding actress. The woman raises her index finger. Aristocrats do not belong to mass-produced people. That's why they give birth to one child at a time. So far, Calcion and Dwin do not understand what the dark-haired man is leading to. Selina struggles to explain. You see, it's like creating a new tissue. There's never too much of a good thing. The woman ends her monologue with a small recommendation to the tailor. Selina thinks it would be interesting to create a cloth made of gold threads. The dark-haired one smiles awkwardly. She is not sure that she said everything correctly, but the tailor immediately dispels the woman's doubts. He calls her a true genius, a person who knows how to create beauty. A dress made of gold and silver threads will shine in the sun and attract the attention of almost every person. However, creating such an outfit will cost the tailor dearly. Calcion says he is willing to pay as much as it takes. The man also orders Davina to create a hundred dresses, each of which will have a different design. Selina raises her eyebrows. It seems to her that the Duke is making fun of the tailor. It is almost impossible to sew that many clothes in twenty days. Selina asks Dwin if he can handle the task. Dark-haired is going to convince the Duke to reduce the volume of the order. However, the blonde does not respond at all to Selina's attempts to make the redheads work easier. Calcion gestures to the servants to bring the sack standing in the far corner of the room. A moment later, they spill a pile of gold coins onto the table. Dwin opens his mouth and blinks. He had never received so much money for an order. Of course, in the case of the Duke, the work is not easy either. But that does not matter to the tailor. He loves his profession and is ready to devote his days to it. The main thing is that the project is interesting. 
the guy shows a fair-haired thumb. Selena is surprised. First of all, she did not expect that the redhead would so easily agree to fulfill the Duke's wish. Second, she was impressed by the amount Calcyon offered. A few hours later, the Duke's room. Someone is knocking on the big oak door. The blonde asks who came to him. It's Janet, a female voice answers. The man allows the maid to enter. The woman carefully opens the door and approaches Calcyon's table. The Duke wonders how Selena's first etiquette lesson went. Janet is embarrassed. The blonde mentally assumes that the class was simply terrible. Of course, Calzoin guessed that Selene was not familiar with manners, but for her to behave so badly, how horrible was that? The Duke wants to understand the scale of the tragedy. Janet's eyes twinkle and with slight irritation in her voice, she says that the woman has talent. The blonde is surprised. I can say for certain that Lady Selena has not studied etiquette before. Her habits betray her origin, but this woman is so capable. Janet says Selena grabs everything on the fly. Dark-haired people manage to quickly remember even the most complex rules of aristocratic behavior. A few hours ago, dark-haired and Janet are sitting at a small round table designed for tea. The Duke's assistant is going to teach Selena some manners. Frankly, the green-haired woman is skeptical. She does not like the Duke's new passion very much. Selena asks the woman if the Duke will come to class. The man promised the dark-haired woman that they would master the science of noble communication together. Janet calmly replies that Calcyon will join later. First, the Duke's assistant needs to tell Selene the basics of etiquette, which Calcyon has known since childhood. The brunette isn't too keen on the prospect of having lessons alone with Janet. The dark-haired man is confused by the green-haired woman's look. He is full of dislike for Selena. The Duke's chosen one frowns. Dark-haired remembers how Janet once treated her. It was one of Selena's first days at the estate. Janet then advised the woman to wear the former duchess's dress without telling Calziono. The dark-haired one smiles. She says that she did not expect to see a green-haired woman in the role of her teacher. I know manners better than others. Janet is proud of herself. Janet also tells Selena about her noble origin. The dark-haired one pretends to listen attentively to Calcian's assistant. However, the woman's thoughts are occupied by something else. She tries to understand how dangerous Janet can be. Dark-haired decides to test this with a provocative question. And if I don't manage to study properly despite all my efforts, Selena says in an innocent tone. Janet tells the woman that she won't let that happen. Green-haired assures the woman that he will make every effort for her education. If you prove to be incapable of anything, then I will take you under my control. Janet's eyes sparkle. Selena doesn't take her eyes off the green-haired girl, trying her best to smile amiably. But in reality, there is nothing funny about this situation. Janet's maniacal desire to keep everything under control seems too strange for a woman. Selene is already wondering what Calcyon's assistant is capable of. But the dark-haired girl has no choice but to learn etiquette with this eccentric woman. In addition, the dark-haired person knows very well the rules of behavior in different places. After all, she was an actress. After a few seconds, Selene and Calcyon's assistant finish discussing organizational points. Janet says it's time to start class. The maid warns the woman that in the process of learning, certain difficulties with body control may arise. The dark-haired one smiles sweetly. Just show me what I have to do. Janet laughs at the woman's boldness. Even the children of aristocrats can sometimes get confused about their manners. What to say about the common people? Does Selena really think it's that simple? The brunette tries not to show that Janet's words angered her. Instead, Selena continues to smile sweetly. The woman says that she is confident in her abilities. Janet purses her lips. The green-haired woman did not expect that the Duke's chosen one would disobey her. A woman from an intelligent family, who is trusted by the Lord of the Northern Lands himself. Muvchanka hesitated. Janet realizes this, so she hurries to speak before Selena says something else weird. Perfectly. Calcyon's assistant does not take her eyes off the woman. However, this does not scare Selena. The woman calmly listens to the green-haired man. However, continues Janet, her eyes flashing angrily, you must pay me if you fail. The green hair leads to the fact that the Northern Duke's assistant's time is worth a lot. Janet tries to inflate her price and intimidate Selena, but she only squints. Green-haired methods do not work. Fifteen minutes pass. Janet keeps a close eye on Selena. I'm stunned, Calcyon's assistant says to herself. Calcyon's assistant does not understand how the dark-haired man managed to reproduce with perfect accuracy the gestures she had seen only once. Now the woman is pouring tea, and she does it very carefully and elegantly, like a real noblewoman. Her posture, the angle at which she holds her hands, Everything is just perfect. Janet's eyes widen. 
The woman is forced to admit that she has almost nothing to teach the dark-haired man. Maybe Calcian's assistant would fix a few things, but in everything else, Celine is perfection. The woman is flattered by the green-haired man's reaction. The Duke's chosen one smiles charmingly at Janet and asks in an innocent tone, Well, how? Am I doing everything right? Calcian's assistant purses her lips. She was not used to praising people, especially the girls the Duke brought. But dark-haired Janet cannot lie. After all, then Selina will complain about her teacher, Kaltsionov. Marvelous, the green-haired one says it very quietly. The evening comes, the class ends. Let's return to the conversation between the Duke and Janet. The woman says that the dark-haired woman is not at all like the savage she tried to show herself to be. The man crosses his arms over his chest. Janet hangs her head. Zelina cautiously expresses her doubts about the dark-haired woman's story. But the Duke does not allow his assistant to persuade. It's not worth it. I am sure of her personality. The blonde tilts his head to one side and smiles out of the corner of his mouth. Calcion is proud of Selina. The woman's behavior during classes exceeded his expectations. This woman really captured the mind and attention of the Northern Lord. However, no one should know about it, especially Janet. The man clears his throat. Will you have time to catch her before you leave? Janet says there will be no problem with that. Calcion promises his assistant to join the class tomorrow. The green-haired one bows to him and leaves the room. The Duke is left alone with his thoughts. A man watches the sunset, how it paints the sky in dark pink and soft purple colors. Meanwhile, on the street, Selina and the two maids are laughing merrily at something just outside the window of the fair-haired man's office. Calcion hears their voices and approaches the window. The blonde casts an incredulous look at Selina. Did she really become a master of strange and stupid rules of etiquette? Interesting. On the one hand, this is very good. Everyone present in the capital will believe that Selina is an aristocrat. But on the other hand, the Duke is afraid of losing to a woman. He smiles out of the corner of his mouth. Kaotsyanov is already wondering what the dark-haired woman's desire will be. Late evening, Selina is talking to one of the maids, a short blonde girl. But he says that everyone is interested in the Duke's chosen one. The dark-haired one laughs. Really? And what are they saying? The maid says that people are delighted with Selina's beauty. They believe that the Duke is crawling on his knees in front of the woman. The dark-haired man is not surprised by these rumors, but rather amused. In her world, she is used to the admiring glances of fans. Now the woman is more interested in the behavior of the maid. Dark-haired decides to check this smiling and kind girl just in case. I don't think Madame Janet trusts me. Selina's voice is sad. Belyavka excitedly asks where the Duke's chosen one comes from such thoughts. The dark-haired one parodies Janet's behavior. If you bring the dukedom into disrepute, I will not let you rest. The maid bursts into laughter. It turns out that Calcion's assistant says these words almost every day. No matter what anyone does, this insufferable woman always starts muttering something about honor. Celine was still lucky. Janet fared much worse with the former duchess. The woman is interested in how exactly. The maid crosses her arms over her chest. Sometimes that insolence beat the lady. The dark-haired woman is shocked. Why do members of the ducal family turn a blind eye to Janet's behavior? Selina remembers how Calcian's assistant was angry with her. Here is the answer to the woman's question. It seems that the Lenbirds have decided to just put up with Janet's difficult nature. The maid says that there is a person scarier than the green-haired one. Selina guesses that it is about Calcian. The dark-haired one smiles, and yet unlike Madame Janet, the duke doesn't stick to small things. The blonde agrees with the woman, and adds that the duke could put Janet in her place if he wanted to. The dark-haired woman takes a sip of fragrant tea. The woman likes the atmosphere in the room. Selina hasn't discussed other people with anyone for a long time. Maids usually shunned dark-haired men and Calcian, and Calcian simply did not know what to talk about with the woman. He is not used to social conversations. Dark-haired decides to make friends with the maid. The woman asks the girl's name, and says that from now on she will visit her often. The blonde, with a smile on her lips, says that her name is Juna. The girl is always happy to help the lady. Dark-haired thanks the maid for her support, but that's not all Selina wanted. The woman had one question left for Juna. The Duke's chosen one is not sure whether it is worth putting it on, but Juna says that the woman cannot worry and ask her anything. The dark-haired one puts a hand to his chin. Do you know who killed the Duke's lovers? The blonde even recoils. She did not expect such a question and does not know whether she should answer it at all. After all, this is the information of the ducal family, but the blonde can't leave the dark-haired one without attention either. The girl decides to tell the woman everything as it is, but before that, she asks the woman not to share what she heard with anyone. 
Dark-haired promises to be silent. The blonde raises her hand to her chin and looks away from Selena. Actually, the Duke's fiancé committed suicide. The woman pretends that she knows nothing about the Duke's personal life. The maid says that there was nothing serious about the girl who committed suicide with her husband. It was a political marriage. Selena wonders if the blonde has ever seen that bride. Of course, the girl's tone is somewhat displeased. I took care of her on the way to the capital. Selena asks what Calcioni's bride was like. It's hard to say. I'm sorry, but I wouldn't call her very beautiful. She was rather a gloomy and silent girl. The woman freezes in place. The information about the Duke's bride, which the dark-haired woman received from two different people, differs significantly. Calcioni himself spoke of Ariel as a decent and quiet girl. June, on the other hand, considers the deceased fair-haired bride to be an incomprehensible and gloomy person who arouses suspicion. Either one of the interviewees is lying, or Ariel was not as simple as she seems. Dark Hair points out that June didn't really like Calcion's bride. Bilyavka is surprised by Selena's observation. The girl quietly says that it is so. Why? asks the dark-haired man. The maid says that despite her silence, Ariel flirted with all the men she met. A few hours later, Calcion's office. A man and a woman are sitting on the couch and discussing what happened to them today. Dark Hair complains about Janet. Like, she demanded a lot from her. So? The fair-haired one is somewhat surprised. I spoke to her. She praised you so much. Selena is indignant. She tells the Duke that Janet is a hypocrite. During the lesson, the green-haired girl almost destroyed Selena with a look every time she made a mistake. The dark-haired man notices the Duke's shocked expression. She guesses that Janet seems to be acting differently with the Duke. The man says that it is true. The green-haired woman never raised her voice at him. Dark-haired decides to cautiously ask Calcian about the past Duchess. More precisely about how Janet beat her. The blonde sighs. This behavior is not an example to follow. It's just that Janet was trying to instill loyalty to the family and the Duke's wife. Selina crosses her arms over her chest. She is increasingly frightened by the customs of this world. A world where your status is valued above all else. A world where you have to be your husband's faithful dog. The woman says she has a different opinion about Janet. The man is interested in which one. Selina lowers her eyes. The dark-haired woman wasn't sure if she should tell Calcian about this. Suddenly, he will not understand her that way. In the end, Selina decides to take a chance. But before starting the story, the woman reminds the Duke that according to the contract, she must return to her world. The Duke looks at the dark-haired man. Kalchinov wonders what his chosen one is going to say. The woman timidly asks if Janet could have played a role in Arelli's death. Selene leads to the fact that Calcian's bride may have been under a lot of pressure. And the Duke himself, and his assistants, and maids. The blonde thinks. The one you trust the most can turn out to be your enemy. The woman continues, carefully watching the reaction of the fair-haired man. Calcion asks the dark-haired one to explain what exactly she means. The woman exhales with relief. Thank God at least the duke is not angry with her. The dark-haired one advances towards the light-haired one. The woman offers the man to analyze the conditions in which Ere lived. It will help the case. Selina says that everyone made too many demands on the duke's bride, it is likely that she could not stand it. Calcion listens carefully to the dark-haired man. There is meaning in her words. The woman asks the fair-haired man if, in his opinion, someone could have pushed Ere to commit suicide. After all, it's easier than getting your hands dirty. The man hesitates. Selina doesn't take her eyes off him. Now she is ready to show persistence as much as it takes. The dark-haired girl really needs to know the truth. If the duke says that Irail could have been pressured then he will have every right to take revenge on the alleged killers. And Selina will help her husband in this. And not only her. People who support the Duke can wage war against anyone who insults or kills an aristocrat. Yes, noble laws are quite strict. But Selina is unable to change them. The only way out of the situation is to adapt to them. The dark-haired woman puts her hand on the couch. The woman patiently waits for Calcion to say at least something. I treat this incident as murder. The fair-haired man looks into the woman's eyes, Calcion hopes that his words will help Selene unravel the case. The woman exhales with relief. At last this obstinate cast aside his pride and confessed. The dark-haired one says in a calm tone that she will find everyone who bullied Ariel. And one of them is Madame Janet. Kalsionov really doesn't want to admit it. He trusted his assistant, considered her almost a second mother. How could she do that? The dark-haired man notices the depression of the man and tries to calm him down. But it's not certain. Other maids could have been involved in Ariel's murder. The blonde wonders, then why do they act like they don't know anything? The answer to this question is very simple. 
the reputation of the duchy, which all the residents of the house gossip about. It was this reputation that could have lost Irel. Herzog does not understand how a person can commit suicide because of the opinion of others. Irel had no inner core, explains the woman. In addition, the girl found herself completely alone in someone else's house, where everyone hated her or showed indifference. Couldn't the Baron protect his daughter? asks the Duke. It's easy for you to talk, said Selina. Errol hardly told her father about her difficult life. The girl was afraid that she might be kicked out of the estate. The Duke lowers his head, and the Baron would hardly help Errol. For him, as for many aristocrats, wealth and honor were more important than his own child, Selina almost screams. Ariel's story resonates with a woman. Selina knows what it's like to have the whole world against you, in his world. The dark-haired woman repeatedly heard insults from female competitors. Other actors and actresses envied the talent of the dark-haired woman and tried to discredit her in every possible way. Someone spread stupid rumors about Selina. Someone spoiled a photo with her. Different situations happened, but the woman always had people who helped her cope with all the difficulties, helped her not to bury herself under the burden of public opinion. And who was with Irel, a man indifferent to her who did not want to see her, or a caring parent? After the engagement, everyone stopped paying attention to the girl. Errol had no one she could rely on. The Duke's bride was forced to solve her problems herself. The dark-haired man becomes sad at the thought. The Duke watches the woman's expression. Calcian does not really understand why and misses him. He, a person who lacks any empathy, finds it difficult to sympathize with others, especially those who were not dear to him. The Duke disliked Irel and never hid it. The blonde never thought that his indifference could kill the girl. No matter how scandalous the rumors, I didn't attach any importance to it, Calcion says quietly. My relationship with Irel was simple. She was my woman for society. For society, then, repeats the dark-haired man, and the truth. Perhaps Errol was creating the illusion of a model bride. Example? asks the Duke. The dark-haired man remembers June's story about Irel. According to the maid, this girl was willing to flirt with all the men she could see, and she was not at all interested in their status. The girl was simply looking for support and love, which she could not get from her relatives. Dark-haired suggests that Irel has had several lovers. And what? The duke is not surprised. For aristocrats, treason is a common phenomenon. No one forces a husband and wife to be faithful to each other. A few affairs for Duchess Lindbergh are trifles. Selina is annoyed by the duke's words how he does not understand that Irel was not considered a duchess. She was a stranger to all the residents of the house, a stranger who can be mocked as you like. The dark-haired one lowers her head and says in a serious tone that Irel might have suffered because of the rumors, just as Selina once suffered. However, unlike the dark-haired one, Calcione's bride has not learned to defend herself and resist this world. No one supported the poor girl. Not the servants, not the duke, not even his own father. She had no place to stay if something happened. That is why Irel committed suicide. The girl simply had no other way out of the situation she found herself in, Selina exclaims. The woman falls silent. The duke is surprised by the dark-haired woman's monologue. He had never seen Selina so angry. Usually the woman kept herself in her hands and did not show her displeasure to the duke. Selene lowers her head and apologizes to Calcian. It seems to the woman that she said too much. I lost control during the conversation, Selina admits. The woman tries to calm down. Suddenly the duke comes to her aid. The man carefully puts his hand on the dark-haired woman's shoulder. Selina freezes in place. Calcion almost never touched her when they were alone. The man stands up. He looks into the eyes of the dark-haired woman. Duke? Selina asks quietly. No matter what the rumors are, the man says firmly, no matter what the truth is, all this has no meaning for me. I'm sorry I didn't notice Irel's condition. The dark-haired one feels the sincerity in the duke's words. He continues. But I will try to become better. What happened to Irel will not happen to you. Don't worry. The man says that the woman should not run away from the castle. The blonde isn't going to break their deal. I will not leave you, Calcion says loudly. The dark-haired girl is confused. This evening was a revelation for her. The woman finally managed to destroy the image of the cold duke and see the real Calcion, a person who suffers because of his situation. Dark-haired understands that it is not the duke's fault that he reacts so indifferently to almost everything. The man did not have an easy life. He began ruling Lenber when he was still a child. The blonde had to grow up quickly. Constant intrigues and conspiracies turned his heart into a block of ice. And this block of ice melts under Selina's hands. The duke smiles at the woman and says in a joking tone that it is better for her not to have lovers for now. Morning, 
dark-haired and the Duke see off Fionnel and Roselle. As always, the pink-haired girl tries to nail Calcion. I'm so glad you came. The girl wipes her tears with her hand. You are so generous, Your Grace. It's impossible not to admire you. Duke rolls his eyes. He says that he did not come for Fionnel. They met by chance. No romance. Juna, who came with Selina, whispers in the woman's ear that Fionnel is better dressed today than ever. It seems that the pink-haired girl is preparing for Selina's arrival in the capital. Fionnel tries to remind the duke to leave the dark-haired man in the castle, but the girl's plan is unlikely to work. The blonde does not pay attention to Fionnel's outfit. Duke and Selina approach Roselle. The woman smiles at the blonde. Have a good trip. See you in the capital. The girl squeezes out a faint smile and gets into the carriage, not taking her eyes off the dark-haired woman. The look on Roselle's face suggests that she will take revenge on Selina. Roselle flashes her purple eyes and says to the dark-haired man in an innocent tone, We will meet if we don't mind, of course. Selina doesn't answer. The woman understands that now is not the time for quarrels. Roselle orders the coachman to go. The neighing of horses is heard, and after a moment the carriage moves from its place. Selina thinks about Roselle's words. That was a threat. The dark-haired man is getting nervous. A blonde, unlike Fionnel, can harm a woman. Selina knows what Roselle is capable of. This wolf girl will do anything to achieve her goal. The dark-haired one tightens his grip on the duke's elbow. The woman admits to Kaltsyanov that she is scared. Looks like... The dark-haired lady puts her head on the man's shoulder. From now on, I'll only be safe if I stick to you. An hour passes. One of the rooms of the castle. Dark-haired, the duke and Janet are sitting at the table. Selina is happy that she will now learn etiquette with Calcyon. Janet says she will only explain a few main points in detail, as the duke doesn't need to know much about etiquette. And behave tolerantly. The green-haired one angrily glares at Selina. The duke's chosen one says that she is bored. Janet hangs her head. It doesn't matter what mood you're in. You must constantly watch your gestures and language. The green-haired man turns his head towards Calcyon. Your Highness! The woman is going to explain to the duke what they will be studying today. But the husband does not let Janet negotiate. The man says that the green-haired girl is too strict with Selina. The woman says that the dark-haired person just needs to study diligently. And she, Janet tries to motivate her. The duke asks the green-haired man why this motivation is so strange. Well, that's the way it is. Janet was confused for the first time in a long time. She looks away from Calcyon. The dark-haired one is mentally glad that the fair-haired one managed to influence the behavior of his assistant. But this is not enough for Selina. The duke's chosen one wants to consult with her herself. The dark-haired one smiles charmingly. Didn't I say I didn't need the duchess's seat? Janet is surprised. She doesn't really understand what Selina is talking about. I don't plan on staying here long. The dark-haired man repeats loudly. She squints sweetly and asks Janet to treat the bugs more loyally. Selina said this because she is afraid to repeat the fate of Irel, who was constantly pressured by both parents and servants. Every movement of the girl was mercilessly criticized. She could not even breathe a sigh of relief. Dark-haired people do not need such happiness. The Duke, watching the women's conversation, understands that none of them is ready to make concessions to the other. The man sighs. The class had not yet started, but he was already tired. Calcian decides to intervene. We don't want Lenbird's honor to suffer. Janet bows her head to her husband. Green hair says he will do whatever Calcian says. The man says that both Selina and he are more or less aware of etiquette, so Janet's excessive strictness is unnecessary. A few hours later, the class is still in progress, all because the lessons that the Duke attended as a child are not enough to go out into the world. Selina can't stand it anymore. She points her finger at the fair-haired man and shouts that the phrase, see you on the terrace, cannot be answered with the phrase, I propose a duel. Janet sighs. The green-haired girl, frankly speaking, was also tired of teaching the Duke. Selina says that only Janet's strictness will help the blonde. Calcium is already scary. The man puts his hand to his forehead. It's all so difficult. Are you saying that other aristocrats know these rules and use them in their daily lives? Janet says it is. Well, at least women definitely know about these things. Duke says that all the ladies he met just laughed and nodded their heads. Where is the etiquette here? Janet says that unfortunately that's the way it is. Selina laughs. But they said that his holiness is not surprising. It turns out that it is not so difficult to do. Dark-haired calls the Duke a fool. Of course, this is just an innocent joke. The Duke says in a displeased tone that now he at least understands why the ladies behave so strangely. Selina and Calcyon continue training. Will we live in the same room? To this phrase, the Duke must answer like a real gentleman. The man is thinking. 
Even in his own castle, it is difficult for him to find the right words, let alone talk about balls, banquets, and noble dinners. After all, the man says that there are many rooms in his house. Lady can use free. The dark-haired one says that she will be bored. Herzog suggests trying some exercises. Exercise in bed? Clarifies Selina. The man freezes in place. Janet asks the dark-haired man to calm down. However, the woman is not going to stop. She says that such ambiguous phrases are popular in high society. The Duke must be ready for this. The man sighs heavily and recognizes Selina as the winner of their argument. Calcian is ready to fulfill any of her wishes. He begs the dark-haired man to end these etiquette torments as soon as possible. Selina refuses. The Duke must learn secret gestures and words. Dark-haired is talking about a woman in a red dress. Cassian does not understand anything. He covers his face with his hands and asks Selina if she can do it all by herself. Think before you speak, the woman answers. The fair-haired man's involvement in Selina's plan is not discussed. If the Duke does not accompany the dark-haired, then she will not be able to become part of the upper world. Calcium sighs again. Selene says in a softer tone that she understands her husband's reluctance to practice, but without knowledge of etiquette, you cannot communicate with aristocrats. The woman shows several gestures. Selena will use them at social events if she needs Calcian's help. The Duke stands up. The dark-haired one gives him a surprised look. The man says that he will be able to demonstrate his love for Selena in public, and he will do it with the help of his body. The Duke's eyes twinkle, and he offers his hand to the woman. The dark-haired man opens his eyes wide. A slight blush appears on her cheeks. The phrase Calcian said sounded strange and obscene. The woman hopes that the blonde didn't mean what she thought. Janet lets out a small, sarcastic laugh. Duke and Selina deserve each other. The man asks his assistant if he and Selina can dance. In this, the Duke is more capable. The dark-haired girl puts her hands to her cheeks. God, that's what he's talking about. Selina places her palm in the Duke's. Calcion asks the woman if she ever learned to dance. No, the woman answers. She decides not to mention modern dances. There are completely different customs in this world. If the Duke sees modern choreography, he will be shocked. The man says that now it is his turn to teach. He and Selina leave the table. Calcion bows to the dark-haired. As you are escorted to the center of the hall, say hello to your partner. The dark-haired one looks the Duke over, trying to figure out exactly how to bow. Of course, female and male bows are different, but they have the same basis. About a minute later, Selina makes an elegant bow. Like this? The woman holds the lush skirt of the dress with her hands. The brunette hopes she's doing the right thing. So it is. The duke smiles at the woman from the corner of his mouth. The man is fascinated by the beauty and grace of the dark-haired woman. He thinks that Selina is perfect in everything. Yes, a woman does not know some things, but she learns them so quickly. The duke wonders how the dark-haired one will dance. He touches Selina's palm with his lips. A man looks into the eyes of his chosen one. Selina is shocked. She is unable to move. The duke had already kissed her hand, but it had been a long time ago. In the head of the dark-haired woman, there are a lot of thoughts. God, it's so hot here. Well, let's not focus on it. Otherwise, he will notice how bad things are, or already noticed. Selina is trying to figure out what to do next. The woman tries to smile, but it doesn't work very well. The dark-haired girl hoped she hadn't missed anything. After the greeting, does the dance begin? The woman asks in a trembling voice. Calcium hums quietly. Of course, Selina missed something, but he wasn't going to tell her about it. Dark-haired will start to worry and will not be able to concentrate. Calcion takes the woman's hands and starts walking. That's it. The sequence is not important. You will be led by a man. The woman sighs with relief and says that she understands everything. Then let's do it again. Calcion gently puts his hand on the dark-haired woman's waist. With the other hand, he holds the woman's fragile palm. The Duke and Selina begin to circle the hall. The man moves quite slowly so as not to confuse the dark-haired man. He looks her in the eyes as etiquette requires. The woman, on the contrary, tries not to look at the Duke. She is very worried, and this excitement makes her stop. The man asks what happened. Selina quietly says that everything is fine. Now we'll continue, she adds in a trembling voice. The dark-haired girl hopes that the man will not pay attention to her strange behavior. Man and woman resume movement. The dark-haired man casts interested glances at Calcion from time to time. The woman mentally notes that the Duke has a very beautiful eye color. No, don't focus on that, the woman says to herself. She decides to digress and ask Calcian about his wishes. The dark-haired one says that he wants to address the duke kindly. As you like, the man calmly answers. 
Selena is surprised that he agreed so easily. A woman cannot fail to take advantage of such an opportunity. Selena wants to come up with some cute nickname for Calcion. The man rolls his eyes. Since it's your wish, then fine. The Duke is not thrilled with the idea of a woman. After a few minutes, the woman and the fair-haired man finish the dance. Selena smiles at her husband and says that she enjoyed dancing with him. The Duke freezes in place. No one had ever complimented him like that. The fair-haired man's mother, a former duchess, said that Calcion danced like a log of wood. The man turns his back to the dark-haired woman and says, That's enough training for today. Time to rest. Selena waves to the Duke. You danced beautifully. A few days later, Selena is standing in the middle of her bedroom in nothing but a nightgown. The entire room is littered with bags of dresses sewn by the talented Dwin. Tomorrow the dark-haired man and the Duke must leave for the capital, but Selena still has some unfinished business. The woman calls her maid. Juno? The girl responds immediately. The dark-haired one smiles and tells the maid that she packed her luggage very well. The blonde answered shyly that it was her job. Juno suggests that Selena is worried about the trip to the capital. The blonde says she can make a soothing tea for her lady. Selena says she wouldn't mind. Juna goes to the kitchen. The dark-haired man looks after the girl. Selene thinks that the blonde is trying to become her hands and feet. She seems to want to help the woman. And also Juna is one of those maids who accompanied Errol to the capital. After a few minutes, the blonde brings tea. The dark-haired one smiles. Thank you. However, the woman is not going to drink tea now. She thinks about Errol and Juna's relationship. Perhaps the duke's maid and bride were quite close. Juna was probably Errol's only support. Her support. The unhappy bride Calcione could complain to the blonde about her life. It's just not a fact that Juna kept these complaints a secret. Maybe the maid told someone about the girl's misfortune and even harassed other maids. I should be careful, the dark-haired man says in his mind. She asks June if she has packed her things. The girl smiles sweetly. Oh no, I was not told that I was going. The staff was selected by Madame Janet. The woman is surprised. The maid says that last time she went at Errol's request. The dark-haired girl decides to try the tea prepared by the maid. Now peace definitely won't hurt. The dark-haired woman's suspicions are confirmed. Juna may indeed be involved in Errol's death. But in order to find out everything, the maid needs to go to the capital. Dark hair says she'll have someone send June along with the staff. The woman smiles sweetly at the girl. You can go. The next day, Selina and the Duke are sitting in a carriage. The fair-haired man is reading some documents. He pretends to be very busy because he is afraid to talk to Selina. After that dance, he tried not to cross paths with the woman at all, so as not to make a fool of himself. The dark-haired one looks out the window, hoping to see something interesting. But no matter how far they go, the landscape does not change. The woman directs her gaze at Calcion. It seems that he is not here at all. Silent all the way. The woman decides to try to talk the duke into talking. She asks what documents he is reading. The man says that these are research reports on the effects of water pipes on hot springs. The dark-haired man asks the man what this research is all about. The duke is surprised that Selina would ask such a thing. Do you like research? He directs his gaze at her. So, the woman's eyes sparkle. What's so strange about this? Herzog says that he has yet to meet women who are interested in science. The dark-haired one smiles charmingly. The duke decides to explain to Selene what's the point if she wants it so much. The man takes out a map. Look, the Duchy of Lenberg. The mainland territories in the north, east, and west. Accordingly, the borders of other states are located below. And the top of the duchy is crossed by the Sindart Mountains. Behind them is the land of magical creatures. There the duke found Selena. Places where you can live are below. Among them are the best lands in the north of Silencia. Hot springs flow there. Selena says that means it's warm there even in winter. Calcyon says that these springs flow beneath all the lands of Silentia. Hot water is available in every house. Selena decides to make a joke. Boiler town? Easy. However, the dark-haired woman did not take into account one nuance. The duke does not know what a boiler is. Fortunately, the man is so fascinated by maps that he does not pay attention to this word. He says that since the country is expanding and the hot springs are located only under indigenous settlements, problems arise. Oh ho! The woman is surprised. She asks how this affects Lenbird. Fortunately, this area has not yet been touched, Dark-haired wonders if the duchy pays taxes. No, Calcyon answers. All because this land belonged to one of the founders of the country. Dark-haired asks if it would be better to declare independence then. The man does not understand why this is necessary. The duchy is almost independent of the entire state anyway. 
Lenbird has a separate army, separate laws. What else is needed for a free life? The dark-haired man opens his eyes wide. She asks Calcyon if he doesn't want to be the ruler of a separate state. This is much more interesting than managing a duchy. The man indifferently replies that he has enough trouble. In addition, the crown prince will not help Calcyon in any way. Selina asks why he is sending these reports to the duke then. There is only one reason, says the man. The fact is that Prince Larson is in a very precarious position. With the help of letters, he tries to torture the duke. The dark-haired one says it's all because of jealousy. The man says that it is. The prince really wants to get the land. Suddenly the dark-haired man freezes in place. She had just realized that Calcyon's death was beneficial to Larson. The duke has no relatives or heirs, so if something happens to him, the lands of Lenbird will go to the royal family. Selina suggests that Larson may have killed Errol. He did this so that the duke would not have children who would inherit his father's land. The dark-haired one cautiously asks the duke if Larson should be added to the list of suspects. The man flashes his blue eyes maliciously. Maybe. Your words make sense. If he really is somehow involved in Errol's death, I will kill him myself. Dark-haired is thinking. The world into which the woman accidentally fell seems to her to be a political battlefield, in which Calcyon plays not the last role. He is forced to constantly risk his life to protect his rightful lands. The woman prays to all the gods that her guesses about Prince Larson turn out to be a misunderstanding. The dark-haired woman wants to somehow distract the duke from his sad thoughts. She says they will have to bring up the payment again. Ten minutes pass. The carriage stops near one of the churches. Knights approach the crew. One of them, Dion, tells the duke that they have arrived at Dunfell. Perfectly. The man answers, wait a little. Suddenly the knights hear a loud crash. Your Highness, Dion asks. He is not joking about the duke. Suddenly monsters attacked him. Or worse, the blonde could be offended by his companion. But the fair-haired man does not answer. It seems to Dion that something must have happened in the carriage. The knight suddenly opens the door, having thought for a few seconds before doing so. Dion's face is warlike. It can be seen that the knight is ready to protect his master. However, instead of danger, Dion sees the duke and Selene confused. A fair-haired man holds a woman wrapped in a towel by the waist. He directs a surprised look at the knight. Dion is so shocked he doesn't even know what to say. The dark-haired girl decides to start the conversation first. Good afternoon. Excuse me, but could you close the door, please? 